Well, good afternoon, Barcelona fans. Welcome to the Surrey Sports Park for the 2023 Kid King Final Trophy to game here between Hemel Storm and Worthy Thunder. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Josh Ben, alongside former player of both teams, Ian Barry. Ian, welcome. A big matchup between these two teams. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Yeah, excited to be here. Uh, two of the top teams in the country at this level. Uh, match up really, really well. Had some, some really good games in the past and excited to see how today goes. Well, you could throw a hammer in here. Maybe it could be Mjolnir. Could be a bit of Storm. Could be a bit of Thunder. But the fans really have come here today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's starting, to, starting to fill up in here. And you know what I know about both these fan bases, having played for both the teams, is they're not quiet. They make a lot of noise. Uh, you, you will certainly hear the Hemel Storm fans and the Worthing Thunder fans today. Well, dynasty is going to be the key word here. Which team now will build that identity? I'd say you met with both coaches early on. Yeah, yeah, we had a chat with uh, both assistant coaches and they gave us a little bit of insight into what we can look for for, for this matchup today and how they've been preparing as the week's been going on. Well, let's go meet with Chris Wright now, coaching staff of the Worthing Thunder. I'm here with Chris Wright, assistant coach at Worthing. How are you, Chris? I'm very well, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm well, thank you. Um, talk us through the week, how has it been, uh, preparation for this game and uh, how's, how's the vibe in the camp, how are we feeling? Yeah, we're feeling pretty good. You know, in terms of preparation, nothing really changes. You know, every matchup is a big matchup for us. So, uh, you know, it just happens to be on a slightly bigger stage today. But this is what both teams work towards. This is why we're in the game. Absolutely. You know, so for sure, both teams are going to be ready. Uh, you know, for us, our biggest thing is to be, uh, you know, as unpredictable as we can. No doubt we're both trying to do that. We, we know what we do well. We know what we don't do well, and we hope we know what they do well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, without, without going into too much detail, what's, uh, what's one of those things that we might be able to look for from, from your side of things, and maybe a key to the game offensively or defensively today? That's a tough question to answer because we go so deep, as both teams do. You know, we go one through 12. You know, so uh, whatever changes we make, other teams are going to react to. But what you can guarantee is it's going to be a lot of energy out here and a lot of passion, you know, so uh, it's going to be a battle. Great. Appreciate your time, Chris. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you heard from the Worthing Thunder camp. And again, big game for them. Big expectations for Worthing. Yeah, and as, as Chris mentioned, really, really high energy, both teams. Going to be up and down. Expect a lot of points. Um, it's honestly rare that teams shoot well in a final, but I expect these teams to play high tempo, high pace, and the matchups are going to be really, really key. Well, let's go meet now with the camp at Hemel, one of the most historic places of British basketball in the history of our game. Let's go meet with Coach Darlow of Hemel Storm. I'm here with Mike Darlow, assistant coach of the Hemel Storm. Uh, how's it going, Mike? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, great, thanks. Um, tell us a little bit about prep for the, for the game today. How's, how's things going? How's the vibe in camp? Yeah, we're really excited. Everyone's been up for it this week. There's been a bit of a different feel around practice this week. Definitely been up for it for sure. Today's all about defense in our opinion. Both teams have a super amount of scoring talent. So whoever brings it best defensively, I think will come out on top. Sure, sure. Um, give us without going into too much detail, uh, a <laughs> little bit of insight, something that we can look for in the game, or uh, maybe one or two things that, that in particular you've been focused on in terms of matching up with the Thunder today. Yeah, so obviously they play high intensity defense, they play, play high intensity basketball, so looking after the basketball is really important for us, and then dealing with their press, we've got different ways that we're gonna try and sort of get into our offenses, but like you say, without going into too much detail about that. Um, so, yeah, we've been a bit exploring this week how we get into uh, our offences in a different manner. That's great. Appreciate that, Mike. No and have Thanks a great one. Time. Thanks, Thank man. you. Well, there you heard it from both coaches. Like I tell you, this is going to be one hell of a match. But if you had to put your money on anybody, who do you think is going to build their dynasty today? Oh, I mean, for, for me, uh, undoubtedly Hemel are the favourites. But it, it's, I don't think there's a lot in it. You know, on, on any given day, Worthing can beat any team in the country, in my opinion. So if we get the, the, the version of Worthing that I've seen show up, this is going to be a cracking game today. Well, now we're going to give you our commentary team today, and he'll be a part of that team. But let's go and meet the voice, the face of English basketball, Mr. John Hobbs, for today's game. Well, good afternoon, Basel fans. Josh, for a very nice welcome, I suppose. But uh, I am joined by Ian Berry alongside Niall Gray. Kicking Trophy Final, the second chapter of this fantastic rivalry this season between the NBL Division One top two teams, the Hemel Storm and the Worthing Thunder. And Niall, we'll start with you. We were at the game on the South Coast back in December. Hemel getting the win, 100 to 95, in an absolute classic at the Worthing Leisure Centre. Two teams have gone in slightly different directions, albeit Worthing are now getting on the right road. 
They've lost through, uh, two more games since, including one in the National Cup semi-final. That's three, actually. Whereas Hemel have gone from strength to strength, still unbeaten in all competitions. What's the difference between the two teams today that you've noticed? Well, obviously, Hemel just went on a tear. They were unstoppable. You said Worthen had those little slip-ups. But the thing I love about Hemel is, you, you heard him in one of the interviews, the coaches talk about defence today, but it's their offence that's completely lifted them this season. They're scoring, was it, 109 points a game. They're outscoring Worthing about like 15 points a game. It's uh, fantastic. Their offence is brilliant. They've got great rebounders. You know, they've got two guys averaging double-doubles, leading the league in rebounding. Yeah, they're just unstoppable. It, the defence has to be a priority for Worthing today because that game we had in December, I mean, if we remember, Taylor Johnson he didn't even finish the game. He was in foul trouble that day. Aaron Rye came in and took over that ball game, and they can't allow him to do that again today. Absolutely. And Ian, you and Josh were talking about dynasties. You know, we go back to the early 2000s with the Teesside Mohawks, then going to the Worthing Thunder, then going to the Manchester Magic, Solent Kestrels. Do you believe that Hemel belong in that conversation, albeit this is the first real season? They've got two wins to go until they're crowned league champions per se. Obviously, there's a long way to go in the season. They've already picked up the National Cup. Do you think they belong in that conversation? Well, for me, Hemel are one of those teams that have been knocking on the door for a while, and they've always had a, a very established programme. And now under the leadership of Bruce Binks, they're, they're really, really showing themselves to be a complete team. And obviously, this season being totally undefeated in all competitions is massive. Uh, and if they can finish out this season and, and get some, some more silverware, there's no, there's no reason why they can't continue to build on that and, and be right in that conversation with the, the historic teams, such as, as you mentioned. I just Absolutely. want to put John into it. If they want to be a dynasty, they're going to do it over more than one season. Yeah. Yeah. Do whatever you can this year, but repeat that success again next year. Right now, the only team that have finished the entire season unbeaten was Reading Rockets back in the mid-2000s. Solon nearly did that during uh, the 2019-20 season. Unfortunately, the season was cut short due to the coronavirus pandemic. But uh, Hemel definitely in good stead to finish the season unbeaten. However, they do have a trophy final here today to contend with. And the team that stands between them and a double at the moment is the team in second place, the Worthing Thunder. Starting fives for both teams. In fact, we're going to go to the team sheets for today's game. Starting with the Hemel Storm, the designated home team for today's game. And uh, they'll be starting with Akeem Silla, Sam Newman, Seth Suave, Taylor Johnson, and Aaron Rye. But what a strong lineup there, Ian, right there, led by Aaron Rye, who many believe will be the MVP of this season. Yeah, I mean, in particular, Aaron Rye and Taylor Johnson, just two of the, the best players in the country at all levels, really. Um, Taylor's shown that he can score on, on any given night, 25, 30 a game. And we've got um, Aaron, just, just one of the toughest players in the, in the league. Very versatile, very strong, can handle the ball, score in a multitude of ways. Really, really solid defensively and rebounds as well, just complete. And as we go to the Worthing Thunder lineup, Niall, and pre season, these, this team was labelled on paper as the uh, early season favourites to actually win the league title, of course. They won nine straight in the league before falling to Hemel in December, and two losses in January to uh, Solent and to Reading, along with a National Cup uh, semi-final defeat to Derby, has kind of limited them a bit, but they've gone through February unbeaten. That's an exciting team, though, to watch. Yeah, and I especially want to see how Orland Jackman does today. He's a key part of this team, being the veteran. He's a great three-point shooter. I think he's second in the league for three-point percentage. You know, that could be key for them today, because they need offense if they want to beat Hemel. Absolutely, and we are nearly time to get underway here at Surrey Sports Park. It's a near sellout crowd here today for this game. About 800 fans have packed in to the premier facility here in Guildford, as we just have slight issues with one of the baskets at one end to where the Hemel Storm are playing. And there you see a fantastic crowd, Niall. And Worthing and Hemel, traditionally, probably, arguably, the two best-supported teams in the league, without question. I see Ian 
uh, nodding away there, but uh, it's a great atmosphere, isn't it? Hi. So Sports Park is, very, is a very good place to watch basketball because there's one side of seating and when it gets packed, the noise just carries across the whole floor. I mean, I've had to turn my volume up just listening to you, John, because it's that loud in here. Ronald Blaine, David Moyer, Hafiz Abdul inserted back into the starting lineup this week, having started on the bench last week against Westminster, as was Taylor Johnson for Hemel in last week's double header against Nottingham and Derby, both in the starting five and completing the starting five for Thunder, Andre Arasol and Orlan Jackman. Ian Lester, Betty Osgore and John Matissier are our referees today and we are underway in the 2023 Kit King Trophy Final and David Moyer with the first possession in the corner of Fies Abdul. This is the three and here is Taylor Johnson. Johnson driving to the hoop, blows the layup. And Taylor Johnson, as said at the start, inserted back into the starting five, Ian. Missed last week's doubleheader as a precaution through injury. Yeah, but straight away, as you can see, his attention gets the ball and immediately rips to the middle and is, is, is showing that he's going to be aggressive from, from the jump. Sam Newman, who won the National Cup on his birthday back in January, has the ball, thought about the three. Instead, kicks it out to Taylor Johnson. Newman at the top. Newman... All the work, room in the world to go inside, but Thunder, who lead the league in steals, come away from it, and Sam Newman picks up his first. Yeah, I think Newman, personally, should have been a little bit more greedy there, should have gone to the basket himself, but he's very unselfish. Of course, he's the man on the team for assists. He wanted to pass it off, and of course, cause a turnover. These two teams, the top two in the league for points per game. Hemel, the only team averaging over 100 points this season at 106, Worthing at around 96. Here is Jackman inside. And Martin Q, as Lyle uh, was mentioning, Orlan Jackman, he's going to be one of those guys who's not afraid of the moment, been in big games, played in these, in these environments. He won't shy away from this today. Silla to Suave. Bumping, Moyer gets a bit of room, short with his jumper, and Blaine the rebound. Fantastic noise inside SSP as Silla strips Jackman and away come the score. Ooh. Silla driving inside and his layup is long. Both teams you feel just feeling each other out. Of course, they're going to be playing again in April, on April the 2nd at Hemel Hempstead Leisure Centre. Blaine in the corner, a three, that's off the back iron. Tipped away by Abdul and picked up by Jackman. Jackman now goes for three. Yeah. Thunder straight away on the attack for three. Yeah, it's a good shot for Jackman. They didn't go in, but when you're... You know, one of the league leaders with three point percentage go for it if you're open. Chapman, a 47% three point shooter for the season. Here is Rye driving at Blaine, gets him up in the air. Johnson wide open for three. It's a great pass from Rye, and expect to see a lot of that. Him handling the basketball, making plays for this shoes. Here is Moyer. Moyer gets Suave on the floor, the free throw line jumper, no good, and Rye another rebound for Aaron Rye. Rye falls on the floor with Blaine, and a blocking foul's been called. Hemel leads 3-2, with just under three minutes played in the first. Here is Johnson for the storm. Johnson misses the three. He had the uh, move or had the step on Arasol. The first MVP of this trophy, Andre Arasol. Won it with Solent back in 2021 against Thames Valley. Here is Abdul. Abdul backing down Rye. Good defense from Aaron Rye, and Johnson comes up with it. An open Sam Newman on the catch and shoots. 
Yeah, great transition on that play. Get the ball down the floor quickly, find the open man, hit the three. Second three of the day for the Storm. Here is Arasol. Arasol driving at Swan, goes across. Arasol was big for them in their last matchup, really attacking early in transition, the secondary transition, and he's tough, he can shoot the three, he can get to the rack. Silla backing down Jackman. What a matchup that will be as Silla gets the other hand. That we saw when they met in the league that Silla would be tough to stop around the basket. Hoyer and Swab, that'll be a fantastic matchup as well today as Arasol has it to Blaine. Blaine, a slight mismatch with Johnson and Blaine scores off the glass. I love that Worthen aren't settling the whole time. They play on the perimeter, they've got a lot of outside shooting, but they're getting to the cup and they're forcing things inside. I like it. Johnson, Johnson twisting and turning, and Taylor Johnson will go to the line for two. And Ian, you actually put up a good point at the start. Worthing were content on just shooting the three. They were zero for three in their first four possessions, and now they're you know, getting a bit more joy inside and there'll be substitutions coming on as Orlando Jackman and Ronald Blaine will take a seat. Brendan Okoronkwo and Tom Ward, the Brighton connection, will check into the game for the first time. If I just go back in time, one of the finest games I ever saw Taylor play was on this floor in Surrey for Thames Valley Cavaliers back in 2021 in the, um, in the trophy, the, well, the BBL trophy anyway. 32 points that night, and he's doing the same as he did that evening. He was the man, to, the go-to man in the early going, who was very aggressive going to the basket. And like I said, had one of the finest games I've ever seen him play. 41 points in the National Cup final as well, back in January. A clear MVP in that, on that day for the Storm, as Hemel lead it eight to six, Abdul driving at Silla. This is the layup. Rai comes up with the loose ball. Suave in rhythm. Newman in the corner. And Taylor Johnson with great court awareness. And Hemel will that, keep the possession. And that's really good transition basketball from Hemel. Overloading the two sides, making sure they hit ahead early and then find the open man in the corner. Shot doesn't go, but good hustle to get the offensive court here. Create an extra possession. Well, out of the 24 three-pointers, that these two teams hit back in December. They were all from the corner exactly, or 13 of them were in the corner exactly where Seth Swarov was, but he misses the three-pointer. Here is Moyer. Tom Ward, catch and shoot, gets it to go. And Thunder now take a nine to eight lead halfway through the first. Right, putting the moves on Okoronkwo, the extra pass to Newman, and that'll be a foot violation. Really yeah. interesting matchup with uh, Okoronkwo now switching and guarding Rai. A little bit of a, a smaller guy, but, but Brendan's been around and he's guarded bigger players. He's very versatile, he talks very well. Just to, something to keep an eye on if he stays on that matchup or not. Yeah, of course, he could be the X Factor because he, he wasn't on the team back when they played back in December. Brendan was on the team back in December. Yes, that was his debut. <laughs> <laughs> Ten on the shot clock. That was actually his debut. Still hasn't got his own vest either. Wearing Camille Archer's old jersey from when he left as Newman drains a three. They're going to put a bit of defense on Newman. That's the third time he's been open on the wing for a three pointer, and he's made two of them. Six points on two for four, three point shooting. Sam Newman, Ward, same result for Tom Ward in the corner. Yeah, in Sam Newman and Tom Ward, you've got two of the finest spot up shooters in the country. And if, if those guys are open, they're going to make you pay. Tom Ward, a 44% three point shooter last season, and great defense from Brendan Okoronkwo. And in, this is something we don't talk about enough with Brendan Okoronkwo. Such tenacious defense at all times, never gives up on the play. I mean, he's fantastic. His anticipation of, of what the individual player wants to do and what the team's trying to achieve is great. He uses his body well, and he has got a bigger body for a guard, and he's effective. Yeah, it's going to be their defense that wins in this game. Jackman puts in a three. That'll move him over 47% for the season. <laughs> 
Here is Swab twisting and turning inside to Silla, who scores. Almost thought he ran into trouble there, but still got it to go. Moya. Thunder by one. Swab on the floor. Ezzy into the game as well. As Ward blocked by Silla. Thunder bench wanted a goaltend. Here is Rye. Rye stops for three. Gets it to go. It was low scoring start, but now the threes are dropping from both teams. Almost it's good to see. Almost reminiscent of the game back in December. A high scoring first quarter with points galore. Here is Jackman backing down Silla. These two men have had an incredible matchup in the past as Ezzy misses everything with his three points attempt. Away comes Johnson for the storm. Johnson fouled by Veron Ezzy. Yeah, both teams start, starting to find the rhythm a little bit after maybe a slow one or two first minutes. And that's just what Taylor's going to do. He's going to put pressure on the defense from minute one to minute 40. You do find that a lot in finals, though, don't you? Teams sort of just feeling each other out for the first few minutes. Absolutely. Because especially two teams who are expected to be in the hunt for trophies. For sure. They, they've got a lot of talent out there, but like anyone, you feel the moment, you feel the occasion. It takes a, takes a while to get your rhythm. Lane yep. nearly stole the ball off Johnson. Swab has it in the corner. Oh! That had an arc on it. That could have hit the roof, that one. Seth Swab, a 46% three-point three shooter for the season. And Swab and Blaine now getting into it. And look at the balance for Hemel. You've got uh, every player already on the scoreboard. And they're just spreading it and finding open shooters and, and making, making the Thunder pay. Storm shooting over 50% from the field so far, and Thunder shooting at a 42% range, as that was a first foul on Seth Suave. And the referees have judged that to be uh, in the act of shooting, so Ronald Blaine will go to the foul line. Had 13 points, six rebounds, four assists, three steals on Saturday against Westminster. Probably one of the most vocal players on the team, Ronald Blaine. And of course, Steeles is one area where Worthing actually dominate yep. Hemel, because they lead the league with 13 a game. I think Blaine has over three per game. David Moyer leading the league in steals per game at 3.1 as Blaine splits the free throws. Here is Newman. Driving it up against Ward. Johnson slashing his way inside. So Trademark Taylor Johnson. And that's just what makes Taylor Johnson so good. He's a three-level scorer, mid-range, out on the perimeter, at the basket, and he draws fouls as well. Great pass from Okoronkwo, and Ward just about hangs onto it, backing down Newman. The turnaround J for Ward is smooth. Listen, I've seen this story before. I grew up playing basketball with Tom. If Tom's in one of these zones, well, they're a different team, and it adds a, a huge dynamic to their offensive output. Right. An explosive first quarter here at Surrey Sports Park, only built in by the incredible support as Suave puts up another three! Wow. Seth Suave is feeling it from downtown here in the first. Moyer finds Jackman. Jackman driving, that's too easy. That's a veteran Jackman moving, doing that his entire career. Just found enough space to get to the basket. And you can just see Silla there talking to Aaron, saying, come over, help me, I need, I need you to step over a little bit early so we'll see if they can make that adjustment. Johnson putting the moves on Ward, finds Silla inside, and he gets his revenge on Jackman. He's still going at it. I'd be happy to see that battle all game, Ian. Absolutely. Blaine finds a bit of room, instead picks up his dribble, finds Moyer. Final 40 seconds of the first. Jackman nearly travelled with it. Ward has it and scores. And he steals it as well. Okoronkwo off the glass. Brilliant pass.
message of play from Thunder, and this is where they're so strong. Full court pressure trap defense, and Hemel, the latest victims. Love the energy from Tom there. Knocks down a shot, but doesn't sit and admire it. Straight back into the play and gets another one. Schwarf with the hot hand again! Thunder have the final possession of the first. Moya. To Ward. Ward a three. And that's off the back iron, and that ends an explosive first quarter here at Surrey Sports Park, where the Hemel Storm lead the Worthing Thunder 28 to 22. Three players on six points for the Storm, Silla Newman and Swan. Taylor Johnson has five points, but leading all scorers, Orlan Jackman, three for four shooting on seven points. Even though Hemel have a six point lead, it's been relatively even in terms of accuracy. It's just the fact that Hemel have gotten more points in transition. Yeah, I think if, uh, if you weren't paying attention to the scoreboard, I think you could be forgiven for thinking that Worthing were winning this game right now. 28-22, uh, and the game has exploded in the last six or so minutes. The only difference really being Hemel have made a few more outside shots. Yeah, they look a Silla inside on the, while we're watching the replays. You, know, you just can't give that guy any space whatsoever. He did it to them back in December, and he's doing it to them again. You've got to shut, try and shut him down as much as possible. He is tough to stop. You've just got to do your best. And Niall... You know, 13 of the 24 three-pointers that were hit in December were all in the corner. And it's the same story again today. Both teams liking to get out into the corner, as you can see there, Ward with the corner jumper. That's got to be a very easy to, easy to defend play as the game goes on. Well, you'd think so. I mean, Sam Newman, was he, is he two or three? Yeah. From, but he's hit them pretty much from the same spot every single time. Tom Ward, he loves that side of the floor by the bench. The players, some of you just seem to love that, what, that place on the floor. And even though Sundari and Trail by six, we saw glimpses of that trap defence full court that caused Westminster so many problems last week. And it's caused Storm a few issues as well. Do you see Zaya Taylor going back in the second period? Sure. I mean, when, when Thunder score the basketball, they can score in bunches. They can score four, six, eight points in a, in a bunch and, and cause some issues in, in transition. Just to go back to the, the corner shooting, it's really difficult to go and guard those corners. They really put a premium on space in the floor and you can't help off of those guys because they'll knock it down. So both teams doing a great job spacing the floor and it opens everything up for everyone. Of course, you say about it, in bunches, the hell had that basket and then the steal and score straight away, didn't they? Absolutely. Well, if you've just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel, welcome everyone. Great to have you all on board for the 2023 Kick King Trophy Final. And this is the first final that actually features players that have played for the second time in, these, uh, in this final. We'll talk a bit more about that in a bit as Johnson has the ball. Arasol back into the game for the Thunder. Here is Rye, who's been quiet by his account so far. Taylor Johnson hasn't, but he's off the back line with his three-point attempt. Has it again, and puts it in at the second attempt. You can see Worthing really keen on Ryan. It's leaving a lot of space for the shooters out. Outside. He's, he's drawing the occasional double team as well, isn't he? But that rebound was just perfect for him to set Johnson up. Five rebounds now for Aaron Rye to go with three points. Only taken one attempt from the field. Here is Ward. A shot from the elbow, and that's automatic. I love it when Tom Ward stays aggressive. Just adds such a good dynamic to Worthing's attack. Probably one of the best pull-up shooters in the game, Tom Ward, and that was why creates so even a little bit of room and he will pull the trigger. Suave, who's been feeling it so far, but a bit of a heat check there for Seth Suave. And the pass from Ronald Lane asking a bit too much of Andre Arasol. So as we uh, mentioned, this is the first time in the uh, Kick King Trophy final where we've had players that are competing in two, well, two different times now. For Worthing Thunder, Nazabu Ramadan, Ronald Blaine, and David Moyer were both losing finalists in 2022. Andre Arasol was the first MVP of this trophy back in 2021. Brendan Okoropo and Orlan Jackman were also part of that day in the Kick King Trophy final or the Kick King Trophy itself, a, a tournament that is organized by Division One clubs. How important, Ian, is that 
to for the Division One clubs in organising such a great event? Yeah, I mean, it, it provides them with the opportunity to play on a stage like this, which is not always the case in, in, uh, in all NBL competitions. I'm sure they're playing against the, the teams that they play against in the league, but it's not the same. You match up against uh, your team on a, on a regular Saturday at your home or your away venue, and you come to a great arena like Surrey Sports Park and you play in front of hundreds hundreds of fans and, and they're screaming and shouting the occasion is massive but that's what we play for as players that's what we look for so and do you know what I love about the final today is we've got a venue which is in between the two teams mm. so no one's having to like like a massive long journey they've picked a venue which suits both sets of fans and I think that's helped with the attendance today because more fans have probably traveled yeah and we can hear them as well as, as John touched Absolutely. on in the in the pre-game both crowd both uh, teams fans make a lot of noise and and we can hear them right now. And for Hebel, Hakeem Silla, Charles Aqua Davis and Taylor Johnson both losing finalists in 2021. So in total, nine players for both teams featured in this final so far in its existence. Here is Newman and Ward. And these two players here, Johnson and Arasol, getting together in the 2021 final. And here is Johnson, a three, gets it to go. Yeah, double figures, he's starting to heat up. Like I say, it's reminiscent of that game he played for Thames Valley Cavaliers a couple of years ago here. here yeah, we, talk about, we talk about all the matchups, but uh, ultimately Taylor Johnson is just the best player on the court. And if, and if he gets going and he's firing, they're going to have a great chance of being successful. So yeah. far a 6-2 run to start this uh, second quarter for the Storm. And as you said, Niall, a double-digit advantage. And... Hemel really come alive in the second quarter. We saw it in the National Cup final against Derby. And we're slowly seeing that today. Thunder really need to stop the hemorrhaging if they want to stay competitive in this final. Well, as you know from that game in December, that game flip-flop back and yep. forwards. So it's very early, you've got plenty of time. They, they've shown they can score the bucket, they can shoot the free. So, you know, a lot of time in this one. Arasol driving at Johnson. Arasol loses the ball. Ward just about has it. Six to shoot. Inside to Ackman. Hellman. Couple of the role players out there now for Hemel in Aqua Davis and in, uh, in Teo out there. And, and those guys really do a good job of switching and talking. So, so look for Hemel to maybe turn up the defense now and, and see if they can extend this lead. Oyafusi fouled by Ackman. No, he's not. He stepped out of bounds. And Worthing will get the ball back. Of course, Teo Oyafusi, probably one of the most decorated players in Division One. Only one trophy is eluding him, and that's the one he's playing for today. Here is Arasol. Finds Afiz Abdul, who likes the three-pointer, but misses everything on that one. Worthing just on a search for a little bit of offense. I wonder how long he can go with Moyer and Jackman on the bench. Thunder now. Two for seven from downtown so far. Here is Newman. Newman gets it back from Aqua Davis. Finds Johnson just on the free throw line off the back iron. Foul ball. And there's one of those hustle energy plays that Taylor will bring you, just fighting for position, forcing the forcing his, his opponent to push him down and he gains an extra possession for his team. First foul on Hafiz Abdul. Storm will get the ball back with 7.26 remaining in the half. Newman. Stolen away by Okoronko. Okoronko now off to the races. It's one on two. Okoronko blows the layup though. And away comes Johnson. Johnson at the foul line. Scratch. So good in transition, Taylor Johnson. Arasol gets it back off Abdul. Arasol the floater override. And a quick timeout called by Drew Spinks. As the Storm lead by eight points, 20 or 36 to 28. That's now four points for Andre Arasol. They're going to need some of their key players, John, to start scoring. Tom Ward's been fantastic, you know, doing really well. But you need uh, Fiz Abdul, you need um, what's Andre his name? Arsel. And your Arsel. yes, that's what I was trying to think of. They need to get more into the game. And they got lucky there. Newman's had a couple of passes today that have been off 
just off target and they've managed to get a turnover as a result. But the offense, like I said, apart from Tom Ward's been absolutely fantastic, but you need more players to absolutely. step up. And you, you, we speak on Tom Ward, who has 11 points. Orlan Jackman has seven, hasn't actually scored, attempted a field goal in this second quarter. But for the players such as Ronald Blaine, David Moyer, they've only combined for two points on one for three shooting and so far for those two players especially really need to start stepping up a bit yeah and i think for for those two in particular ronald you can get his without calling the set for him he can cut he can find offensive boards opportunities in transition but david's really really key he's probably their most dynamic ball handler on the court and when they don't have all and inside outside when they don't have ronald going when hafiz has not necessarily got the matchup they like david really needs to create whether it's in pick and roll one-on-one -on -one, or attack and closeouts create for himself create for others he is their starting point guard so far he only has two assists david moyer with 6.54 remaining in the second hafiz abdul has two points but on one for five shooting as you see thunders track defense Not in full flow exactly, but Taylor Johnson brings it over the timeline anyway. And, uh, foul has been called. Just checking to see who that foul is on. It was a loose ball foul. And it was on David Moyer. That's his first foul. Now as Orlan Jackman will check back in for the Thunder, Ronald Blaine will take a seat. And for Orlan Jackman, Ian, it's very important that he now gets into the flow of things and does what he did in the first quarter, and that was attack the Storm. Yeah, he was great early on, and, and uh, Thunder need to look to him. Seemed like when they went to him, they had a lot of success. He was able to get to the basket, he was able to get loose. So, so they, Thunder really, really need that if they're going to keep this score ticking over. Johnson, Newman, great defense from both Abdul and Moya. Johnson will shoot two foul shots. A bad foul if you're a, the Thunder Nile. That was a shot from the free throw line, so... Two seconds on the shot exactly, clock. Exactly, yeah. But the thing is, Taylor Johnson had made a basket from there, what, a minute or two ago in action time. He, like you say, Taylor Johnson's, you know, dangerous from anywhere, really. I mean, one thing Worthing have done well, they haven't been able to keep Aaron Rye off the boards this game, but they have kept him quite offensively. But saying that, then the Tay Johnson says, that's OK, I'll take over for you, and I'll provide the offensive output. No. It's, it's hard to keep one player quiet. It's really difficult to keep two players quiet. And Ronald Blaine, who uh, sat on the bench for four seconds, comes back into the game, and uh, Tom Ward will take a seat. Taylor Johnson, an 85% foul shooter for the season, makes his first. And strings the second. And it's a double-digit lead for the Storm with 6.28 remaining in the half. Thunder really need to get some points on the board or risk being blown away by the Storm. As Arisol has it at the top, drives inside. Abdul in the corner, that's money. Much better for Moya and Arisol, really attacking, getting in the gaps and finding the shooter. Yeah, had to go in because there's no way he was going to rebound that. Had to go. Fiz Abdul leading the team in scoring at 18 points a game in an offensive foul call. Fans of Hemel are not big fans of that, and that's a second foul on Sam Newman. Big possession now for Thunder. This is an opportunity for, to build some momentum, back-to-back -back scores, back-to-back -back stops, see if they can get it done. Here is Moya looking for the three, but Taylor Johnson says no. Here is Arasol driving in slam. All the room in the world, Andre Arasol. We said about him the last time out when he sees St. Marisol, and he's come out, and that's a beautiful layout from him. And that's great defense go again. from Jackman. And another turnover for him. And just like you said, back-to-back -back scores, back-to-back -back stops, and now a chance for Thunder to potentially make this a one-position game. Yes, momentum firmly in their favour now. If they can put a couple more scores on the board, look for a timeout quickly from Hamill. Yeah, they're just starting to wobble a little bit. This is a great chance of Werben. Moyer a three! That misses everything. As Ryan runs into a bit of trouble, and Arasol with the steal! Arasol slams it home! Thunder fans on their feet! And it's a one position!
possession game. Halfway through the second. Johnson nearly lost it. In fact, playing traveling with it. And look at the energy now from Thunder. Trapping, double teaming, diving on loose balls. They're here now. They've come to play. We've got a game. It's getting a little bit chippy and physical as well. We said at the top of the broadcast, Worthing needed, if they're going to win it, they need to win with their defence. And they've shown great chances of it just now. And so I think Ronald Blaine might have... Is that a dislocated finger or he something? He might have just, yeah, it might have popped out the socket. Jackman was just trying to pop it back into place. Sorry for the uh, graphic detail there. but little, um, little Kobe Bryant moment. Yeah. When it's a final, you do anything and everything, I guess. Uh, Thunder's team physio, Paul Baskin, is on hand. And I think Ronald Blaine will go to the bench to actually go to the physio to uh, get that checked out as uh, Veron Ezzi comes back into the game for the Thunder. But great hustle from both teams there, especially from the Worthing Thunder. Absolutely. They've turned it up in the last few minutes. Three-point lead for the Storm. Here is Johnson. Johnson travelled with it. Three turnovers in three possessions for the Storm. It, Drew Spink just telling his team just to calm down. You can see the motion there. It's like, what point does he call timeout? But at the same time, a good move from Drew Spinks to keep the game going and let the team, let the Hebel Storm dictate their own play. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes coaches like to allow their team to play through these moments and get used to the feeling that they're in and maybe maybe find their own way and not I mean, burn that timeout too soon. Bodies diving on the floor in centre court and a foot violation was called. Otherwise, Akeem Silla would have had an open basket to play with. And Hemel will keep the ball. And as you said, Niall, it's getting a bit chippy. It's getting a bit intense on the floor. And it's, it's a only, final, though, isn't it, It's only John? reverberating it, on, the, yeah. on the stands as well. It's a final, yeah. yeah it's absolutely. a final. Two great teams going up against each other. It's what we want to see. Now, hopefully, the viewers at home are enjoying it just as much as we are. Bunnell a three. Bunnell gets it to go. First shot, first score for Jack Burnell. Jack Burnell, another ex-teammate of mine, just, just another guy on the Hemel bench that you cannot leave open on the three-point line. He is a knockdown three-point shooter. Five for 14 against Nottingham last week, Jack Burnell from downtown, as David Moyer tried to answer but missed. Here is Rye. Rye looking for options and finds it in Newman. <laughs> Newman finds Rye in the corner, but marked by Ezzy. The double team again on Rye. And here is Bernal who steps Step out of bounds. Jack Bernal looking for back to back threes, but uh, unfortunately he was too close to the Hemel bench. Jack, such an example of uh, young British talent, has been a mainstay in a really, really good Hemel setup. Jack Bunnell, who actually trained with Taylor Johnson in the off-season back in the States. That's Jackman with the finish. Timeout, head of Storm. And Jackman, who had a highlight dunk against Westminster that was so impressive that Ronald Blaine was telling the physio to ice down uh, Jackman on the sideline once he came off. And a second dunk for Jackman today, meaning business. Yeah, do you know, I'd like to see that more. I'd love to see Moyer and Jackman in pick and roll as much as possible. Both really, really aggressive threats on the offensive end. And it's going to be tough to stop if you can get Moyer in and around that 15-foot area and Jackman roll into the rim. And a good spell this for the Thunder. Four turnovers in that period from the Hemel Storm. And Thunder have connected on three of those four turnovers. And that's a big game-changer right now because it's gone from a double-digit game to a four-point lead for the Storm one point it was three you can see my notes there john worthing to win it but win with defense <laughs> that was the key for me and they've just been absolutely fantastic they looked out of sorts at time i don't know if zaire was trying to find the right lineup to get on the floor but it's just suddenly all coming together hemel had that wobble and i did wonder at one point was drew spinks trying to save his last timeout for near the end of the half because he's been forced into it so now he's got to do something he's, he's actually was it burnell came made that basket yeah, the bench, wasn't it? He's the only player that's really made something the last few minutes. Thunder in the ascendancy, now it's Hemel's turn to respond. Yeah. Absolutely. 
a game of runs and two teams that are very, very well matched up in their top end talent. And both teams will go as deep as seven or eight guys in, the, in their rotation, but they really do match up well, a lot of shooting. Maybe Hemel has the, the edge in terms of size, um, but, but really yeah. both teams can go at it and, and put runs together. So we'll see who, who has the next run in this half. And you can see Thunder straight away going man to man, full court. They lead the league in steals, and it's defensive plays like this that uh, have made them top of that table. But uh, Newman gets it over the timeline relatively comfortably. Here is Suave. Storm in the, on the offense. Here is Suave. The extra pass to Johnson. Nearly lost it. Silla gets it to go. Hakeem Silla, that's probably his absolute bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, fantastic defensive possession, and then Silla just does what Silla does. Arasol, a bit of room for three, gets it to go! And he's part of the reason he's fight back. He had two points early on. He's, he's, he's been part of it defensively, and now he's scoring defensively. He's suddenly finding himself into this game. First ever Kick King Trophy final MVP, Andre Arasol, back when it was the L. Lynch Trophy. Here is Suave inside to Johnson. Difficult shot on the follow was Silla, and here comes Arasol. Arasol to Ezzy inside. Arasol to Ezzy. Beautiful move from the Thunder, and it's a one point game. Yeah, very unselfish play to find the cutter. And yeah, Andre Arasol is really putting his imprint on this game. Absolutely. So far, he has 10 points on 5 for 5 shooting. Andre Arasol. And two shots to come for the Storm. Sam Newman, one of the best in the league when it comes to free throws. And strings the first. In fact, Andre Arasol has 11 points. That was a long three he hit, so... But he is still 100% from the field, five for five. Newman splits the free throws, and here comes Moyer. That wasn't the commentator jinx. <laughs> but he, he's shooting 75% coming in today, which is a great number. Well, last season was 88%, so his numbers are down slightly. Hasn't taken as many free throws, though, this season as he did last. Here is Ezzy driving at Johnson. Moyer. Oh, nice fake. Moyer gets it to go. That's David Moyer's first field goal. Lovely move to improve his position and just get a nice basket. And of course, we're tied. Tied at 44. Here is Rye. Almost carbon copy of their meeting back in December. Johnson to Rye. Rye finds a bit of room for three and off. After all, a big Great rebound. rebound. And now Thunder can take the lead. Arasol with three. Puts oh! it in. We're saying at one point, Tom Ward's the only one that seems to have shown up apart from Chapman. And of course, Arasol must have heard us from over there because he's been absolutely fantastic since then. 14 for Arasol. Silla puts it in in the second attempt. He's got to have at least 12 of them in this quarter, is he not? He's taken over. I'm not sure how many he's had in this quarter, but offensively, he's been the guy. And defensively, they've been really together. They've kept Aaron quiet. They're working as a unit and they're finding him offensively. That's 10 points for Silla as well as Arasol. Moya in rhythm. That's off left, but Silla, or excuse me, uh, Arasol had it. Newman tips it out of bounds. The Thunder keep the possession. This is an important final minute for Worthing. If they get a chance to take a lead into the break, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Hemel. Hemel aren't really used to playing from behind. So if Worthing can get himself to lead, it'd be absolutely fantastic for them for the second half. But for one minute remaining, Thunder are in the penalty at the moment. It doesn't really mean much at the moment. There haven't really been that many ticky-tacky fouls in this game so far. They've all been very physical fouls. Hemel still with just two team fouls. But right now, it's all about Andre Arasol, who has 11 points. And my goodness me, he's been lighting it up from the field in this second period. 
Yeah, and I've always liked Andre's game. And, and one of the keys when I spoke to Mike Darlow pre-game was he was talking about the transition offense, the transition defense. And, and Andre's so good in transition, whether it's out on the break with an advantage, two on one, three on two, or whether it's in secondary transition where he's able to attack, get in the seams, and then find open shooters. He's obviously started knocking shots down himself, and now he's up to 14 points, and he is... He's put a team on his back in this little run, and they're right there now. Absolutely, and 10 of those points have come in the second it's quarter. 10 of them, right. I, I thought it was 12, right? <laughs> I, I remember looking up thinking, he's only got two, what's going on here? But of course, he's got a couple of rebounds as well, he's got a couple of assists. He's just suddenly come to life, and imagine he's doing it all now. As you see, uh, Ishmael Fontaine there on the screen, uh, a veteran of the uh, British basketball scene and a very... Uh, committed player in the community supporting the Worthing Thunder in local coaching schools and of course he used to be a teammate of Drew Spinks didn't he yeah, at the MK Lions former, and exactly a former teammate of Drew Spinks Thunder by one with a minute remaining in the half Arasol it's a lot of space Jackman putting the moves going to drive. Oh, Newman. But he blows the layup. Just as the shot clock was winding down, here is Johnson. Johnson nearly lost it. Rye. Swart. Good defense on the perimeter by the Thunder. Yeah, Swart was hot early, but they've kept him quiet recently. And here is Swart again. Eight to shoot. And Johnson puts in three. The perfect response. From the Hemel Storm. Can you need a bit bucket, John? Sorry, that's the guy to go to. Shot clock has been turned off, so Thunder will get the final possession. Leading by two. Here Where's is Roy. Finds Jackman wide open from the wing. This is everything. 2.6 seconds remaining. And the Hemel fans letting all and Jackman know about that last possession. And a offensive foul has been called. I think that might be on Seth Swan because that was a a very strange-looking screen he was going to set there. And Hafiz Abdul went straight to the deck. That's two fouls now on Seth Swan. That's a bad foul for him. Yeah, I think he just wanted to get a little brush screen. Two seconds on the clock. See if they can get over the top and get a clean look. But offensive foul. Now here come Worthing. The opportunity to go into the game tied up, or maybe even with the lead. 2.6 seconds remaining, a lot of time. Ezzy in the corner, misses the three-point attempt, and that ends the first half here at the Surrey Sports Park. And the Hebel Storm sneak into a two-point lead over the Worthing Thunder. Worthing Thunder took that second quarter 25 to 21, but Hemel still hold the two point advantage. It's a fairly even game though so far, Mike. Well, oh, wait, it's even now, of course, it wasn't earlier, because Hemel Storm had that double digit lead. I think at least twice they had a 10 point lead. But Worthing, they found that right rotation. We've had players come to life like Andre Orisol, and they are back in this one. And of course, they had a chance to take the lead with tie going to the break. And both teams shooting around 56% from the field. In fact, exactly 56% from the field. So high shooting percentage for both teams. Absolutely. And, and for me, it's really good to see that, that when there was a run early in the game, there was a response from Worthing. Because one of my concerns was uh, Hemel being such a solid outfit. If they did get out early, they may never look back. And it's great to see now from a neutral point of view that we have such a close game. The matchups are set. Everyone's into it. And we're good to go for the second half. In fact... Three tenths of a second have been put onto the uh, game clock. We thought it was half time, and we were just about to get. Uh, I think we were just about to get Akeem Silla for a um, a half time chat, but uh, not quite yet. Because three tenths of a second have been put on. So no Thunder will shoot. get yeah. a final possession of the half. Yeah, foul called on Taylor Johnson. Only allowed to tip it in under point four. So look for maybe Eze at the rim here. It's going to be hard to tip in from where he's inbound, isn't it? <laughs> I was just thinking that. We're going to go over the, <laughs> over the backboard? Very tough angle, but they don't really have any options. Under point four, you cannot catch and shoot, so it's going to have to be in the air and it's going to have to be tipped to, towards Absolutely, the Absolutely, yeah. And it, it did go off on the buzzer, actually, so that would have counted had it gone in, but all that chapman 
finished everything. And that ends the uh, first half officially now here at Surrey Sports Park. And I think we've uh, caught Akeem Silla, or no, we haven't caught Akeem Silla for the storm for a uh, half time chat. But it's been quite an exciting first half, Niall. It's been it's a great first half for both teams. Worthy fans might have been a little bit worried early in the game, but they've come to life, even though they're trailing by two at the break. They're the team that's on the rise. They've got the com more confidence at the moment. They've given Hemel a blow. It's now down to Hemel after the second half to respond. They need someone like Aaron Rye. Aaron Rye, for me, he's been getting the rebounds. I don't know if he's got, but he's got a few. But he's not doing much offensively. But Worthing have done a good job of keeping him quiet. Mm. So will he spark into life in the second half? Absolutely. 6.8 rebounds so far for Aaron Rye. Absolutely, Aaron. Aaron's put on a little bit of a show, but he hasn't really put the stamp that we expect to see from him. So Josh Beck is courtside right now with Worthing Thunder's Andre Arasol. Am I looking, talking to you? Yes. Andre, currently now you guys are down by as many as 10 points. You only sold back into it. 14 personal points. Is it defense or offense that's going to win the game for you tonight? I mean, our game plan coming in and everything. We know Hemel is a great team. I feel like it's kind of offense versus defense. Um, looking at the score and looking, it's kind of been basket for basket. We need to be better on the defensive end, and that's what we said that we're going to set out to do. So we need to be better. But our defense is all right. We've had spells, but we need to keep it consistent. Going now, down low, half. of course, you got all the Jackman. But going against Akeem Silla, FIBA Afro Basket experience, what do you guys have to do to keep him off the boards? Oh, Silla's great, man. He's just that guy that just fulfills his role. So we have to be able to limit him out of the paint, paint touches, not letting him go right, and boxing out, man. That's day one. Boxing out is the key thing. So, yeah. All the best to you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. And that is half time here at Surrey Sports Park. The Hemel Storm have a 49 47 lead over the Worthing Thunder in a tightly contested physical and at times gritty first half here. Join us for the second half, and what a second half it will be in around 10 minutes' time. So Slam Jam, it's a new initiative by Basketball England, targeted at 7 to 11 year olds. It's about getting the children to, to have fun, to link basketball with a fun experience so that we can get lifelong involvement in the sport. And it's really focused on engagement and a fun, positive first experience. So it's not so much about the skill development side of basketball. It's really just about giving people a positive first experience of basketball. They're having fun, they're with their friends. They can develop at their own pace in their own time. So it's 
really developing on coordination, core strength, as well as basketball skills. So there's not necessarily basketball specific games, but they've got basketballs thrown in there. So they'll be they're working on dribbling, shooting, passing in a less structured environment than like a training session. And it's yeah, just focused on fun and getting primary school age children engaged. When they come to the first slam jam session, they get a t-shirt which they can keep. Each primary school they get some slam jam basketballs and then a little goodie bag that the children can take home. And another thing, throughout the session, if we see like someone's doing really good at a certain skill or teamwork or being just nice and friendly to other people, they can get stickers. Good practice and sportsmanship as well as being good at the skills. So I think the reason this programme is different is that there's a 12 week curriculum and there's different things to work on. And obviously, as a coach, you can kind of chop and change a little bit as is appropriate for the age group that you're teaching. But it just means that everybody's getting that same fun, first positive experience. Literally, we're just trying to get them to have positive experiences with basketball so that later on they can be maybe even just a supporter of the game. Go online, get in touch with Basketball England. They can also search Sam Jam for the local centres to them that run the initiative and they can inquire, maybe even get a coach to come in and run a 12-week session. Without commitment, the sport is nothing. Without commitment, the sport can be just a recreational tool. But if we want to have a sport as an educational tool, it has to be committed. So Slam Jam, it's a new initiative by Basketball England, targeted at 7 to 11 year olds. It's about getting the children to, to have fun, to link basketball with a fun experience so that we can get lifelong involvement in the sport. And it's really focused on engagement and a fun, positive first experience. So it's not so much about the skill development side of basketball. It's really just about giving people a positive first experience of basketball. They're having fun, they're with their friends. They can develop at their own pace in their own time. So it's really developing on coordination, core strength, as well as basketball skills. So there's not necessarily basketball specific games, but they've got basketballs thrown in there. So they'll be they're working on dribbling, shooting, passing in a less structured environment than like a training session. And it's yeah, just focused on fun and getting primary school age children engaged. When they come to the first slam jam session, they get a t-shirt which they can keep. Each primary school they get some slam jam basketballs and then a little goodie bag that the children can take home. And another thing, throughout the session, if we see like someone's doing really good at a certain skill or teamwork 
or being just nice and friendly to other people, they can get stickers. Good practice and sportsmanship as well as being good at the skills. So I think the reason this program is different is that there's a 12 week curriculum and there's different things to work on. And obviously as a coach you can kind of chop and change a little bit as is appropriate for the age group that you're teaching. But it just means that everybody's getting that same fun, first positive experience. Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park as the Hemel Storm lead the Worthing Thunder 49-47 and Josh is courtside with Hemel's Hakeem Silla. Thank you, John. Hakeem, 10 points so far in the game. You guys built a substantial lead, but you've allowed them back in. Defense or offense is the key for you? Defense is the key. You know, both teams are gifted offensively, but the small details on defense, so we decide this game. We knew that from... Now, you know, preparing the game two weeks ago, so we knew defense is going to be key. Now, of course, you guys are a big threat from the perimeter, but yourself being a post player and yeah. an international post player, what do you personally have to do inside the paint tonight on offense? You know, I just got to take what the game gives me. You know, like you said, we have a threat outside, uh, so we just got to play in and out, finding the right balance between in and out. But I would just take what the game gives me, 10 points, and then we'll see what the second half comes with. Now, of course, you played in the FIBA Afro Basket. I've commentated four games for Guinea at the World Cup qualifiers. No Hakeem Silla. Yeah. Will you be playing for Guinea at the FIBA Afrobasket qualifiers? <laughs> Hopefully soon. You'll see me soon. So you're not going to let me down, are you? <laughs> That's the girl. That's the girl. Hakeem Thank Silla, so have much. a stop. Thank you very much. Back to you, John. Thank you, Josh. And uh, great, uh, great coaching there from Josh, trying to get Hakeem Silla to play in the Afrobasket qualifiers there. Very well played there, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> The third quarter begins, Ian, and uh, while Noel Gray is just out for just a second, unfortunately, Ian, you'll have to put up with me for just a bit longer. What does Thunder mean? It's a fairly even first half. Both teams shooting over um, over 50% from the field. But what does Thunder have to do to get a rhythm going, get a run going in this third period? Because right now, they've had a good run, but Hemel have probably on the course have had better runs in this game so far. It's been very tippy-tappy from Thunder, but they've got momentum right now, haven't they? Well, do you know, even though um, Hemel are leading by two, I, I would say that, that Thunder will be the happier team going into the break. I feel like uh, the pace of the game, the way the game's being played, will be more in the style that Thunder would have wanted it. They want to get up and down, they want to shoot a lot of threes, they want to get some steals out in transition, and they were able to do that in that, in that second quarter. More of the same. Um, definitely need their defense to, to fuel their offense a little bit. Would love to see David Moyer in more pick and roll. Would love to see David Moyer, Orland Jackman um, out there playing pick and roll, playing two-man game uh, and getting after it. Um, and that's going to open up things for their guards and their shooters, as, as we saw with Arisol, who was able to really, really put the team on his back and get them right back into the game. And as we were talking, Josh Bett just creeps <laughs> up onto the commentary booth to take a selfie with us. Oh, crikey. I'm... Once that hits Facebook, I'm never going to hear the end of it. But um, for you know, you mentioned that Worthing are probably going to be the happier of the two teams. We've seen instances where the full court pressure defense has stifled Hemel just a little bit. But as the second quarter wore on, they got over it, and you know, but at the same time, got some turnovers right now. Do you think that's actually making them a little bit? nervous because in the first meeting between the two teams that was a huge factor particularly in the first quarter when Worthing took an early 11 point lead yeah I'm, I'm not sure about nervous but um, when I when I spoke to Mike Darlow pregame one of the keys that he said for them to handle the pressure was for to get Aaron, Aaron Ride handling the basketball in the full court um, Worthing's guards are very aggressive they trap very aggressively Biggs not so much and, and not as mobile uh, not as able to play 94 feet up and down so uh, from their perspective I think they want to get him handling the basketball getting the ball down the floor, finding shooters early and spacing that floor. And, and they've been able to do that. We've got a great second half coming up. Absolutely. And Niall Gray has now returned to the uh, commentary booth. He actually avoided the uh, halftime selfie with me, Josh Bett and Ian. So well done to you, Niall. But for the this Thunder... This is my old court, though. <laughs> I, I don't say people. I thought I had to go and say hello to some people during the break. I do apologise. But you, I think the fans at home appreciate the fact I wasn't on screen for a couple of minutes. <laughs> That's Don't fair enough. That. That's fair enough, but I guess. Ju just, John, just one point I want to make. We talk about scoring in the pre-game. Hmm. Thunder are on course for their normal average. The Storm are below it. So just that's a new difference there. Worthing are playing to what they should normally have at this point. Absolutely. 
But it was a two-point game, wasn't it, in, in, back in Worthing at half-time, uh, back in December. Thunder had the lead in that time, so it's roll reverses now. Well, it's their home floor. They wanted to go and exactly, the show, didn't yeah. they? They wanted to land that first blow, what have you. But as, as you well know, that end, towards the end of their game is when Hemel really came alive, and despite the fact that Taylor Johnson, who didn't have a great game that day, obviously was off the floor. As you see there, Zaire Taylor giving some last-second instructions to his team. You saw David Moyer in the picture. Moyer, one for five from the field. Does have four assists in the game, but this is almost carbon copy of what he was, how he was playing in the uh, Kick King Trophy final last season for Team Newcastle. But on that day, Team Newcastle lost the game, and David Moyer saying to us last week that uh, he just wants to contribute to the team in any way he can. If he's not scoring, he will try and dish it out to other people so they can pick up the rhythm. Yeah, and I don't think for David is necessarily about being a leading scorer, but it's definitely about having an aggressive mindset and creating for him and others. He is one of the lead ball handlers and it's going to be in his hands a lot. So we'll see if in the second half he can do that. As the third quarter gets underway here at Surrey Sports Bar, Hemel, the designated home team for this game as Chapman goes inside. First possession, first score, and the game is tied at 49. Now, as Aaron Rye handling it, and nearly stone fell, it was stolen. Away comes the Thunder, it's two on one. Blaine inside. Half court, half court press there worked well. Sorry, you so fantastically well to protect that ball from Taylor Johnson on defense and still get the ball in the bucket. And that's where Blaine can be really effective in transition. A very versatile, elite finisher. And then oh, nearly another steal there. Suave nearly got picked by Orlan Jackman. And Moyer steals it off the pass from Rye. Risky pass from Aaron Rye. Blaine again misses everything with the layup. A little bit out of control. And here is Newman. The extra pass to Rye. Sets his feet. Puts in a three. I think that's the first time that Aaron Rye has been that open today in making word and paper. Aaron Rye, two for four from the field for nine points. What you find in high-level basketball, you miss an opportunity like that on the break. You've got a disadvantage coming back and it leads to a wide open three. Jackman driving inside. The extra pass to Blaine, who looks for Ward. One on the shot clock, Moyer a three, puts it in! That'll do David Moyer's confidence the world of good. Absolutely. Johnson. Rye finds Silla, offensive foul, good defense, good court awareness from David Moyer, almost warrior-like. And we've seen David Moyer now, that's a charge, he's picked up a couple of steals, he's made a late three in, in, the, in the shot clock. This is the David Moyer that Worthing Thunder need to be successful. What a start to the third quarter, as you said, David Moyer has had. A losing finalist last season with Team Newcastle, alongside Ronald Blaine on the ball now. Ward, eight to shoot. The extra pass to Chapman. Thunder have got to get busy. The elbow jumper from Chapman off the back iron. Suave. Ja uh, Johnson, excuse me, the extra pass to Silla. That's beautiful from the storm. Just always under control, in control of his body, finds an extra pass at the end. I actually thought he was going to lose it there. In fact, yeah. Silla was the right place. Game is tied at 54. Blaine looking for Arasol, finds him. Arasol. That was a three pointer, and it's short. Here is uh, Johnson. Johnson driving at Blaine, creates a bit of room and banks it home. And look at the pace here from Taylor Johnson, just assess assessing the floor, looking for his options, and then calmly goes to the bucket for two. Pace from both teams is electric right now as Tom Ward on a catch and shoot from the elbows. Yeah, he 
did it from outside the arc, now he served inside. Taylor Johnson, just a little slow defense, gave Tom enough time to get that shot off. Probably one of the best mid-range shooters in the game, Tom Ward, especially from the pull-up. Right. Suave, seven on the shot clock. Suave nearly lost the ball and a blocking foul called, I believe, that will be on Orlan Jackman. And that will be his first foul of the day. And I don't think Zaire will, will mind this kind of foul from Orlan. He's being aggressive and he's showing hard on the pick and roll. They really don't want to get that guard turning the corner and then finding Silla and Aaron on the backside where they can really, really get hurt when Orlan gets pulled out to the perimeter. Do you think this tempo suits Worthing more than it does Hamill at the moment? I, they're trying to disrupt as much as possible, aren't they? I like to think so. I think they want to play in almost like an open run, open scrimmage type of game. And Hamill really want to play more of a controlled style and get it to their scorers. Worthing, one of the best teams actually in transition in NBL Division 1 this season. As the ball goes out of bounds, Hemel will keep the possession. Yeah, it's good work by Arasol to get a deflection on that. So far, though, as far as transition points go, only seven points in total have been scored as Johnson in the corner. And David Moyer nearly got it, but uh, David or Sam Newman has it, and Akeem Silla with the finish. Great awareness from Sam Newman. What a big play from Sam Newman to sort of save that possession, if you like. Jackman, a three, that's way off. And Johnson picks up the rebound. Suave, wide open, three. That's in and out. Silla with the offensive board, muscles his way and finds Newman who puts up a three himself and gets it to go! Sam Newman from downtown, he moves on to ten. Yeah, Silla knew that one's good, didn't even bother going for a rebound. Moya looking to answer. Arasol to Blaine. And a foul has been called. A great use of his body there, just to shield the ball and draw the foul. And a timeout has been called by head coach Zaire Taylor for the Thunder. As a third foul has been called on Sam Newman. So as soon as he got that three to go, he picked up his third foul. And now 5.16 left in the third and Sam Newman enters foul trouble. Yeah, with Hemel though, I, I feel like uh, Sam Newman can maybe afford to be in foul trouble. They do go deep in terms of guards, in terms of shooting. So I'm, I'm not sure that coach Drew Spinks will be too concerned unless he picks up his fourth. Yeah. Because he had that great play moments ago, didn't he, where he saved the possession and in, almost in one motion gets the ball in for the easy finish at the hoop. Just, just really quick thinking from him. Yeah, great presence of mind to stay with the play. Uh, they, they just miss a shot. It looks like they're going to be playing defensive transition. He gets a steal, he throws it up and still is able to finish. So if you've just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel, welcome everyone. Great to have so many of you on board here today and number of people leaving comments chris hughes from the rebound basketball blog who's here today on the front row don't know what he's doing on youtube though as he's watching it face to face live and in person and uh, ian a very a guy that's very close to our hearts i guess uh, dave marshall leaving a, a comment saying hello to both of us great to have him on board unfortunately he can't be uh, here today due to uh, health reasons but so uh, great to see him on board watching and a, a, a long-standing servant of Worthing Thunder Basketball Club. Yeah, the, the, the voice of the Thunderdome Absolutely. somewhat with uh, the commentary down there and he's been doing that for years. Uh, back when I was with, with Thunder, he was doing it then and he still does it today. So he's great, been doing great to hear it, from Dave. doing it ever since Thunder came into existence as they moved from Stevenage back in the uh, late 90s, 1999. As it turns out, as Blaine puts up a three and puts it in. I love the tempo of this game. So many guys making shots, getting in rhythm, impacting the game. On for a really, really good finish as it winds down this third. Here is Suave for the storm. Looks for Taylor Johnson, marked by Arasol, and Johnson travels with it. That's a second travel of this game, picking up his dribble. I think that's great defense from Arasol. He forced him into that travel. Mm. Arasol hasn't come out as fencefully as he was in the second quarter. Maybe that halftime break cooled him down a bit, but defensively he's still doing it. Yeah, you'd, think, you'd think as well that Thunder would have cooled down having got so much momentum as Abdul 
short with his three and uh, Rai picks up the rebound, but they've started the third quarter quite well. It's good rotation. Rai inside over Blaine. Great defense there from Ronald Blaine, but Aaron Rye gets it to go anyway. A high degree of difficulty, but Aaron Rye showing what he's made of. Yeah, really tough. Went left, went right, countered, went back to the left, and then just able to finish over Ronald. Maybe a little bit of a, of a uh, drag into the pivot foot, but gets away with it, and he's able to finish for two. I'm really happy to see it, because it's been quite this game. That's just his eighth point so far. If Hemmer want to win this, they really need him to be aggressive like that offensively. And despite the fact that Aaron Rye has been quiet by his standards, he's still flirting with a double-double. Nine points, eight rebounds so far for Aaron Rye. Andre Arasol, Tom Ward on the catch-and-shoot. That's long. And very quietly as well, Hemmel getting into a momentum. They lead by four right now. Thunder just going a little cold from the field. And do you know, I think these, these fouls on, on misses really hurt Worthing because it slows the game down. And I feel like when the, when the game is slower, Hemel do have the advantage. And now they're going to walk it down. They're going to run their set. They're going to get it to their guys. Because you mentioned Ryan flirting with double double. Him and Silla are pretty much automatic double Ooh, doubles. Are absolutely, they yeah. And that's, that's one of their strengths this season because they're such a great rebounding team. And it's really difficult because you mentioned earlier on about the size difference. You notice it from our angle, just how much smaller Worthing are than Hemel at times. Yeah, and, and with Hakeem Silla and Aaron Rye out there, it's just such a tough cover to get both of them off the glass. No player has more rebound team of the week and player of the week nominations as Aaron Rye. He's been player of the week seven times this season. Nearest to him is Reading's Troy Cracknell with three. Here is Arasol driving and gets it to go. Just Much needed basket for the Thunder. Yeah, absolutely. And just something to keep an eye on. A little bit of frustration creeping in for Taylor Johnson. Starting to get frustrated, maybe forcing the issue a little bit here. Key stretch in the game with 3.30 to play. And it was at this time where Johnson had four fouls back in December. Fouling out in the first minute of the fourth quarter. Here he is again and foul. Beautiful. Where, good, good, good court awareness from Taylor Johnson. Off ball movement. No one does it better than Taylor Johnson. And, and Johnson getting fouled in the same spot pretty much where Aaron Ryan was fouled a couple of possessions ago. Well, he needs a better drop there defensively. And he's such a smart player, it's not really going for him in terms of with the ball in his hands. So he allows others to create and he cuts back ball and he finds himself with that one opportunity. Tom Ward will check out, Brendan Okoronkwo will check in for the Thunder as Teo Oyafusi comes in for Akeem Silla. And Charles Aqua Davis checks in for Sam Newman. So almost like for like substitutions by the storm, just protecting Drew Spinks, just protecting the starting five. As Taylor Johnson goes to the foul line for the three-point play. In and out, but Aqua Davis on the follow. Huge possession, that from the Storm, they lead by six. Instant impact for Aqua Davis off the bench, that is massive for them. Thunder need to respond, Hemel with great momentum here at the moment, here is Abdul. Abdul loses the ball, Oyafusi comes up with it, here is Taylor Johnson, a pull-up three. Big rebound from Rye. Oyafusi will slow it down. Chef Suave travelled with it. In two minds, whether to shoot the three or pass it out. And the Hemel fans not liking it, but a good call by John Letizia, the referee. Yeah, I think as the tempo goes up, that, that, that nervous energy, you, you want to make the right decision, but you want to play at high tempo. You want to capitalise on those opportunities. He's just maybe shuffled his feet a little bit. Moya for the Thunder. Akeem Silla loses the ball, back-to-back -back turnovers from the Thunder, and Johnson Ooh. finishes hard. <laughs> and he, he makes the shift sign to the uh, Worthing fans. He's been doing this for the whole game as well. 24 points for Taylor Johnson as well now. Moya. 
it's Taylor Johnson's redemption right now as Blaine goes inside and steps out of bounds, nearly stepped out of bounds. A foul was called on Teo Oyafusi. That's his first foul. Even though it was months ago, he had a very frustrating game last time. They played him because had the foul trouble. Yeah. I don't know if after all this time, he still wants to take it out on them. At 10 points, back in December on 4 for 10 shooting, but yeah, fouled out with four minutes left of the fourth. As the Hemel fans booing Brendan Okoronkwo whenever he has the ball. Jackman, four to shoot. Abdul for three, gets it to go. Big basket for Hafiz Abdul. He now moves on to five. Big shot for Worthing now as they keep it in single digits. Very important going into the fourth. A minute 45 left in the third. Suave nearly slipped. Stolen by Ezzy. It's one on two. Ezzy stolen by Johnson. What defense from Taylor Johnson. Here come the storm by Johnson. Suave wide open three. Rebound by Jackman and a foul by Aqua Davis. And the roof would have come off if he makes this one. Well, half of the roof would have come off anyway. <laughs> half of the roof, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what, only, what a... only Katie Raftopoulos ever took the roof <laughs> off here. <laughs> we will never forget that call, Niall, but... <laughs> either way, what a possession and what hustle from Taylor Johnson. Yeah, he really does it all. Complete player. Big possession this for the Thunder with just over 90 seconds left of the third. Abdul oh. has it stripped by Aqua Davis. Here he is again off the pass from Rye. And a great defensive play from Okoronkwo, Thunderball. Brendan Okoronkwo answers right back. Yeah, he, he does really well at one end, fantastic. I don't know why his teammates weren't calling out, because he took all day to swipe the ball away, but then he got too far under the basket and lost the ball. Impact from both benches right now. Here is Moya for the Thunder. Jackman putting the moves on Oyafusi. Tough shot, short, and Oyafusi rebounds. Final minute of the third. Each possession takes a new significance as Rai backs down Okoronkwo. A bit of a mismatch here. Great defense there from Moya, but Aaron Rai collects it in the second attempt. <laughs> Score. Just shows you what he can do. Abdul twisting and turning. Abdul doesn't get it to go. Jackman, well, excuse me, uh, Johnson was fighting for it. Hemel will keep the ball. 27.8 seconds remaining, so Worthing, in theory, should get a final possession. Yeah, all of a sudden, a huge 20, 27, 28 seconds here. Down yeah. seven. You want, you want to go into the fourth quarter within single digits, and, and this is a key defensive possession for Worthing now. Of course, potentially it could be a double digit lead for Hemel. It's the last thing Worthing wants. I think they're going to go for the three on this. So. Rye. Rye finds Oyafusi. Shot clock winding down. Rye driving. Great defense. But followed by Rye. Big, big swing. And that ends the third quarter, and what an ending for the Hemel Storm Worthing with great defensive intensity to get that first possession dealt with. But Aaron Rye, with brilliant court awareness, got the ball and put it in at the second attempt. And it's a nine-point lead for the Hemel Storm going into the fourth. But when I eventually turned up at half-time again, one of the things I wanted to see in the second half was more from Aaron Rye. And he has showed up. It just seems to be every quarter, so someone different is showing up for each team. Uh, except for Taylor Johnson, who has been consistent throughout the game. Absolutely, 24 points 
for Taylor Johnson right now. But Aaron Rye, we talked about Ian, how quiet he was to start the third quarter, and he's come alive. 13 points and 10 rebounds. So that's three straight double doubles for Aaron Rye. Yeah, he's, he's, he's put his fingerprints all over this game, and it's, it's, it honestly hasn't done too much different. He's found himself inside, he's finished underneath, maybe been a little bit more aggressive on the offensive glass and, and really finding that inside position, but just showing how talented of a basketball player he is. And so far, Niall, four players in double figures for the Hemel Storm. Tom Ward was on fire early, but has only scored two points since the first quarter. And Andre Arasol and Orlan Jackman, the only other players really stepping up for the Thunder. So right now, Thunder really needs someone to answer the call. And who do you think that will be? Well, we saw him on the screen a few moments ago, probably like Orlan Jackman, who was hot early going. The only problem with Orlan is he had a couple of shots come up short, but he's been defending much better now. So we see him, we see him on the screen there. He, he for me, is a guy, the veteran leader. I want to see him, but Andre Orosa, I thought when he made that layup in the third, there's a layup in the second quarter that got him going offensively. I was hoping that would start, but Tom Ward, maybe it's time for Tom Ward to step up again. They, they need someone, and they're going to need it soon because the last thing they want to do is let this league keep creeping up. Sorry, sorry deficit, I do apologize. <laughs> Yeah, for, for me, a way back into the game is, is when they get scores, is to put the pressure on and, and get a couple in a row and, and get some turnovers down in transition that can get them back in this game. I mean, I mean you guys have seen more of Hamill than I have, but they, they have just been playing transition this the third quarter, making worthy mm. pay for it. Do you try and stop them more? Do you try and defend them higher, Ian, to, when they inbound the ball or what? It's yeah, just... I, I think for, for Worthing, when, when you do score, you've got to capitalise and, and get your defence full court. That's where their strengths are. Speed the game up, force some turnovers, try to score in bunches. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Hemel are a great team and they've got good players all over the court. But ultimately, in, in the half court, if you let Aaron Wright get positioned inside and, and now you've got a double and you've got a triple team in, it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough, a tough afternoon when, I mean, when he's kicking out the shooters. You, you keep Aaron Wright quiet for a couple of quarters, but you can never keep him quiet for our entire game. For sure. So can Hemel see through this final quarter, or will Worthing be the one in 27 and one, or 22 and one? Excuse me. Where did 27 come from? Here is Johnson. Finds Rye. Great defense from Blaine. Eight to shoot for Johnson. Again, good defense from Rye, but the referee saw a foul in there. And Blaine is just battling down there. A little bit, little bit undersized to, to be guarding Aaron Rye, but he has given it his all down there. And that's four fouls now on Ronald Blaine. Almost carbon copy of... Uh, last year where he fouled out in the fourth quarter for team newcastle and so far he is uh, on course to do the same here today yeah, did really well get a hand on the ball but you could see when we saw the replay there or the contact as well aqua davis for three as blaine rebounds and is fouled by oyafusi it's going to be interesting to see how Worthing approaches fourth quarter. Dr. Zaire's had a chance to speak to them. As if, like I said, they just can't afford to let this become a double-digit deficit. And Zaire Taylor, one of his strengths being a player and transitioning into a coach is how strategic and how methodical he is in every possession. As Aqua Davis, on oh no, a foul has been called. It was on Aqua Davis. Hebel fans. Up in arms about it. That's three fouls on Aqua Davis. As we see here in the replay, looked like a push off from Ward in fairness. Almost six and one half a dozen of the other, I guess. Yeah, I think he played him pretty physical up the court, and then the last one was just a bit too much. Arasol off the glass, or excuse me, nearly got it off the glass. That's just the trajectory of the ball, that is. As, well, uh, you, you thought from there you would. <laughs> Johnson on the pull up. Near enough, every basket that Taylor Johnson today has scored has seen a shush from him as he moves on to 26. Arasol, the up and under block by Rye. Tom Ward, a long two, money. Big time shot, big time shot. They're searching for offense right now. Johnson again. Johnson a three. It's the Taylor Johnson redemption. 
29 for Taylor Johnson. You had 32 points last time you played on this court. And he's going to beat that at the rate he's going. Jackman blocked again by Rye on the follow. Jackman gets it to go. The defense in this second half from Hemel has been so impressive. It has fueled them and able, able to get out and get early shots. Newman. Oh. Beautiful Euro step from <laughs> Sam Newman. Arasol, gap is 12. Chapman muscling inside, gets it to go, and a foul. Three-point play the old-fashioned way. At the time, that was Hemel's biggest lead of the game until Orlan Jackman came to the fore. It didn't look like bad defense, but Orlan able to really force that contact and get to the line. A veteran move, we should call it. <laughs> it's something he's been doing, obviously, throughout his career. Absolutely. I said during the uh, at the end of the third quarter during the break, they needed to see something from him, and that's what four points for him already in this fourth quarter. But and need to see more from other people. Tom Ward's obviously had a basket. Just need. I want to see Arasol probably get a bit more aggressive too. You'd never guess, but we haven't even played two minutes of this fourth quarter so far, and the action has been fast and furious. As Taylor Johnson in line for another 30-point game, of, as we've said before, 41 points in the National Cup final back in January on way to MVP honours. And certainly a leader for MVP honours here today as Jackman just about gets the friendly Surrey Sports Park roll. That was for you, Niall. That, that, was, was, for always, you. that was always your line, John. That was for you. <laughs> Here is Johnson. Oh, wow. Johnson falls to, or excuse me, Jackman falls to the floor hard. And something is... Let's just see the replay as Jackman really not happy. The Worthing fans booing. Let's have a look. Because Johnson... Was that heads? Wang, gag. No, got the, uh, a slight bump of heads, but it was the elbow coming around from Taylor Johnson. Referees didn't see it. Not sure if that was... I think that might have been accidental. Uh, accidental, sure, but, but really fortunate to not get called. Uh, yeah. it, this, this elbow being this high, any contact around the head is usually going to result in a foul. And, and quite a big missed call for, for Thunder here with, with eight to play. And that caught Orlan Jackman square on the ear as well. Jackman's... Uh, Jackman just uh, on the bench right now. He looks to be OK. Nine-point lead for the Hemel Storm, 7.52 remaining. The action is fast and furious, especially in this fourth quarter, Niall. I could barely hear myself talk but with the amount of noise here. This is what I'm enjoying about this game today, John. Apart from when they were feeding each other out at the start of the day, it's just been frantic ever since. Yeah. One, one team's always on a run with big buckets. You know, there's so many fans here from both teams, though. That's what helped making the atmosphere. One half Worthing, one half Himmel, and it's really making a great atmosphere. But sometimes, obviously, so Scorchers play here in the BBL, there'll be a handful of away fans, a few, and the atmosphere is very, very different. But because you've got so many fans from both teams, it just means there's constant noise. And, of course, it's a final. There's silverware on the line. It means a lot. Two teams with competitive fire, entrenched in their DNA, Hemel Storm and Worthing Thunder, 7.52 remaining in this colossal Kick King Trophy final. Yeah, thus far, the story of the game has been a run and then a team answering that run. And we'll see now if, the, if Thunder can get some stops and put a run together and give us an exciting fourth, end to the fourth. Johnson on 29, here, and here is Aaron Rye. He has a double-double at the moment. Here he is on the ball, finds Johnson in rhythm right now, continues his form. So tough. 31 for Johnson. Redemption from December the 10th, personally, but can he steer Hemel to the win? Arasol looking for Okoronkwo and finds him. Moya. Moya fouled in the corner by Aqua Davis. So David Moyer will go to the foul line. David Moyer, who was one assist shy of a double-double last week against Westminster, 10 points, 9 boards.
You can see Aqua Davis wasn't happy after that call. Aaron Rye going across Ooh. just to have a little word, calm him down. David Moyer, a pretty reliable foul shooter for the season, makes the first, and the guy who leads the team in assists actually plays more minutes than anyone on the Thunder roster this season, averaging just over 30 minutes, nearly 31 minutes a game. He led uh, the league in assists last year, didn't he? he did, Newcastle, yeah. yeah. Just about nine assists for Newcastle. Yep. 9.3, well done, John. <laughs> I was 0.3 out, though. I said, well done. <laughs> we, we can round down and round up. It's not a problem. Near enough. Here is Aaron Wright driving at Abdul. Here is Aqua Davis to Newman. Seven on the shot clock, stolen by Moyer. The league leader in steals comes true. A three for Moyer is good. And this is what you get when you put a guy like uh, David Moyer to the free throw line. He gets in rhythm. All of a sudden, he feels confident. Now he makes a defensive play, makes a shot, and they're right here now. Momentum with the thunder. We want to see who would step up for Worthy, and in a moment, it's Moyer. Johnson runs into trouble, finds Akeem Silla backing down. Great double team there, shot clock winding down. Moyer Rye misses the layup, but that'll be a... No, it's a thunder ball. From here, that looked like a Hemel ball. That looked like it came off Okoronkwo last. But Thunder get the possession. Hemel not complaining. Yeah, didn't get a clean look at it, but right now all the momentum with Thunder, and as we've seen, they can put runs together. Six minutes is a long, long time. Five-point game. Here we go. <laughs> almost, I'm almost wishing you were on the court there, Ian. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Moya, Abdul sets his feet for three off the back iron. That ball looked like it went out of bounds, it did. It was a late call from the officials, but it did go out of bounds, so Hemel will get the ball back. Hemel, who led by 12 in the early stages of the uh, third, well, late stages of the third quarter to the fourth, have now surrendered it just a bit. It's a two possession game. Love this lineup for Worthing defensively, very switchable. Very dynamic. Johnson. Good help defense from the Thunder, but a foul called. I think that'll be on Jackman. No, it's on Arasol. That's Arasol's third foul. That's why Jackman was trying to claim it. He's on one at the moment, is all on Jackman. It did look like it was on Jackman, to be fair. But I'm not as experienced as a referee at the caliber of John Letissier, so. Rye gets it to go off the feed from Newman. That was pretty from Hemel. That's a play we're going to want to see again. And just for you, Niall, we will see that again, I assume, on the next dead ball. Here is Abdul putting the moves on Rye. Jackman, seven to shoot. Jackman all blocked by Silla, but the foul has been called. Yeah, as soon as Jackman picked that ball up, there's only one thing as good as a drive to that basket. And he would have scored had it been for that foul by Silla. And Orlan Jackman with 16 points so far, shooting 53% from the field. The one guy we haven't spoken much about for Worthen is Hafiz Abdul. And he, he is a scorer in this league and look for him maybe in these last five minutes to get going. If he can make a shot or two, he could impact this, this outcome in this game. Five points in the second half for Hafiz Abdul. So I remember has gone the three points. I can't really remember has, a lot else from him, but he has so much happening. But he has contributed at other ends as well, defensively getting a central rebound for the Thunder as uh, Chapman splits his free throws. It was tipped from Abdul, but a little too heavily. And it will be a... Well, that's the thing, we always got to look at the bigger pictures. Absolutely, like, yeah. Rye was having a quiet game offensively, but he's still getting the blocks, he's getting the rebounds. Hafiz Abdul, 3 for 11 from the field, but has contributed in other mentions of the stats. That was a risky pass from Newman, and it was tipped out by Hafiz Abdul. It's 15 on the... Was the ball in the front court? I didn't see that. It, I think it must have been in the front court. It was in the front Can't yeah. quite see it from that replay. Yeah, I think they crossed the timeline and yeah. got tipped back by the it's defense. Okay. I like this switch from Zaire where he's put Brendan Onkoronko onto some of their ball handling with Sam Newman. Able to disrupt the length a little bit and, and slow their offense down. 
Sam Newman does have an inch height uh, advantage on Brendan Okoronkwo. Shot clock winding down. Suave. Newman has to put up something. Shot clock violation. Great defense from the Thunder. And Suave, he had a little bit of an opening. Maybe should have shot that. Yeah. Well Got next to come. Sorry, we're, yeah, we're late in the clock. I mean, this is what I was talking about with this this Thunder lineup. Very switchable, really, really active, just covering up gaps, making it really tough to find an open look. I was just saying, Johnson was shouting at Suave to get him the ball. Yeah. And it's like Suave never saw him. Arasol driving at Suave. Misses everything. Jackman comes up with the loose ball. And I think the foul's been called on Silla again. That's three fouls on Akeem Silla. And that's, fr that's free throws now for Thunder. Hemel in the penalty. 4.51 remaining. If you're going to come back in the game, a great way to do it is with the clock stopped, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And now that both teams are in the penalty, now the defense has to be... Thunder still have two team fouls. Uh, two more team fouls. One to give? Okay. Yeah. So at all and Jackman makes the first. He now moves on to 18. But no, like you say, a vital part of this game now and a good chance to stop the clock. Thunder now in the penalty, um, excuse me, Hemel now in the penalty. Yeah, this, this could affect him down the stretch, but he's still got almost five minutes to go. But you've got to make your free throws. Well, that's the thing, you see, Worthy, I think it was 67% on the season, yeah. they? They weren't, the, they're, they're right down, I think, over halfway in in Division 1 yep. for free throw centers. That's how bad they are. Hemel are better, but I still think they're like third in the league. Yeah. So that's the one thing Thunder, that we... Thunder shooting 67% as a team uh, for the season as Chapman splits the free throws. So Thunder are now 6 of 10 from the foul line in this game. But free throws really will play some sort of an importance, especially for the Thunder. Newman looking for options. Finds it in Johnson, who falls to the floor, still gets it to go off the back iron. Suave with the loose ball. Johnson got Brendan Okoronkwo jumping for joy as the Hemel Storm players wanted a unsportsmanlike foul. I don't think that would have no. come. No. <laughs> that he would have been very harsh. He sold the fake on Brendan. He's even got the receipt now. That's, that's, how, <laughs> that's how good he sold it. Very smart play from Taylor on the reset just to get his man up in the air, draw the foul. And now both teams are in, will be in the penalty. Now that, yeah, now they will. You got there eventually, Ian. <laughs> Here is Newman. Suave a three. Big bucket for Seth wow. Suave. He's been quiet for so long now, to his confidence a world of good. Because he was on fire early in the game. War to answer. War to answers. Anything you can do, I can do as well. It's a great seat again. He was another player, great early on. Been quiet ever since, and then big bucket for him. Here is Newman, lost the ball. Moyer falls to the floor. There's bodies on the floor. Ali Oop to Rye, just about gets it blocked by Jackman. Huge play from Orlan Jackman. Here he is again at the other end, gets wow. it to go. One possession game all of a sudden. It's a deep end to what a play from Jackman of an eye. into him. A mini yeah. 5 0 run from the Thunder. Rye inside. Gets it to go. Big bucket for Aaron Rye. What a fantastic game you've seen. If you're watching this at home, get on social media, share the link. You don't want to miss the ending to this one. Moyer to Ward. Inside to Jackman. Good defense there from Silla. Jackman gets it and scores. Two point game. Team Silla just hesitated for a second and Jackman made him pay on the second opportunity. Yeah, we mentioned Nolan Jackman will not shy away from the moment. He's been there, he's done it all. Right. Whistle has gone. Taylor Johnson on the floor. And a foul has been called on Andre Arasol, that's four fouls for Andre Arasol. Timeout has been called by Zaire Taylor with 2.48 remaining, 89-87. It's as you were from half-time right now. 
absolutely phenomenal stuff from both teams in this Kick King Trophy final, Ian. Yeah, what, what, what we've seen here is, is Taylor Johnson and Aaron Roy in the second half really start to take over for Hemel, but impressively, Thunder have just stuck with it, kept plugging away, and they've let their defense fuel their offense these last few minutes, been able to get out and score a few points, put some points on the board, to get to the line, and slow the game down. And, and I love the heart and hustle of Orlando Jackman. It's, it's as if he's like almost carrying the team on his shoulders at this point. He's using that veteran savvy to try and lead this team to, I would say, almost an upset in a way, because Hemel would have been the favorite team coming into today. Not by much, but still the favorite team. But Worthing have come back from at least 12 points deficit right now, and have now made it a two-possession game. And there was a period about a minute ago where Hemel had a seven-point lead on the back of the Seth Swart three, but have come roaring back with a 7-2 run of their own. Yeah, obviously Orland Jackman making some great plays, Tom Ward finding his range once again, and that's given them life. I mean, to be a one possession game with 2.48 to go, it's a good position to be. So if you've just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel, welcome everyone, John Hobbs, Niall Gray, Ian Berry, keeping you company, Josh Bett on the sideline today, and what a last two minutes 48 we have in store almost reminiscent of this team's battle back in December at the Worthing Leisure Centre. Hemel coming out 195 victors in that one. I mean, we, we said back in December, what a great advert the, the, these two teams playing was yeah. for the National League. And they've upped the game today. They've upped it even further. It's a, that's an amazing advert for the National League. And there'll be one more encounter between these two teams as Johnson misses the first. One more encounter on April 2nd in Hemel. Hemel just need two more wins in the league to secure their first ever league title. Noise is deafening as Johnson makes the second free throw. Here is Moyer. Yeah. No Jackman in the game. Look for David Moyer to possibly be aggressive here. Arasol still on the floor on four fouls. Here is Blaine. Blaine driving, Moyer a three, off the back iron, and Silla rebounds. Roy has it. Johnson stops at the foul line and scores. <laughs> and that's his best ever score on his floor. He had 32 that time he played for Thames Valley, and now he's beaten it. 34 for Johnson. And that's a backbreaker for your defence. He runs right to the heart of the, the key and just pulls up the two and nails it. Still only a two-possession game, though. That's the main thing. Abdul loses the ball. Hemel get the ball back. Yeah, you've got to get Jackman back into the game. And, yeah, Jackman will check in. Afiz Abdul will take a seat. Of course, Afiz Abdul playing against his former team today in Hemel. Spent the... Covid year with the Storm. This is his second season with the Thunder. See Ward playing defense on Newman. So the pressure from Worthing really want to try and get another steal or stop. Newman picks up his dribble. Worthing fans rise to their feet. And a foul called on Ronald Blaine. And I think that will be Ronald Blaine done for the day. It is, it's his fifth foul. So Ronald Blaine fouls out for the second straight Kick King Trophy final. But Thunder's still in a possession to win this. Yeah, it's been a really tough matchup all day, and Aaron Rye just with his, his strength has overpowered Ronald Blaine in those 50 50 balls in those one on one moments. Ronald he's got, Blaine. He's got size and strength, hasn't he, in that matchup? Ronald Blaine fouls out seven points on three for five shooting. Has two assists, three rebounds to his name as Rye ices the first. And you know that in this final 1 minute 43, free throws are really going to be vital. Both teams in the penalty. Rye ices both. This is a huge possession for Werber. My goodness me, you aren't joking. Here is Jackman. Ward screaming for it. Jackman inside to Okoronkwo. Okoronkwo misses it. Agonizing miss from Okoronkwo. Here is Silla. Nearly lost it. Jack, uh, Johnson, excuse me, the floater. That would have been huge. 
Johnson still has it. Time on Hemel's side. Rye. Rye running out of room, out of bounds. It'll be a worthing ball. Huge possession this for the Thunder. Yeah, the thing is just uh, 63 seconds left to go, and they need three scores. Worthing shooting 52% from the field. Zaire Taylor calling a timeout for the Thunder. And like you said, Noel, Worthing need a couple of possessions, Ian. This is huge and a good timeout for Zaire Taylor. Yeah, they need to come out. They obviously need to get a score. Three would be preferable, but really the best look at the basket they can get in the shortest time possible. They need multiple scores, and time is the time is against them. So they've got to come out. They've got to take the best available look. They've got to get. They've got to score, and they've got to get a stop. And for Hemel, Nile, it's all about just being patient and taking your time now, and don't commit any silly fouls because they're in the penalty. If you want to be patient, then don't put the ball in Taylor Johnson's hands because I thought <laughs> the last couple of possessions he might try to run the clock, but no, he is looking straight for that basket. I want to score, I want to score. Now that's the way he plays, and you know, fed to him, that's made his career. And former Worthing Thunder player George Evans, hello George, by the way, great to have you on board. Saying that Ronald Blaine has to play a, had to play a bit smarter and has just picked up his fifth foul. He's out of the game. That's something you might have to agree with. Absolutely. I mean, he's a, he's a big source of offense for them over the course of the season. Tough matchup for him with Aaron Rye. And in the first half, they were able to double and get out of his hand. Second half, it was a little bit more one-to-one, man-to-man coverage. And it, it, it was ultimately cost him his, his time in this fourth quarter as he fouls out. And former Worthing player Kamel Archer also on board today. Great to have you on board. And... It's all set up to be an enthralling fourth quarter here at uh, Surrey Sports Park. A minute, three seconds remaining. Hemel by seven. Thunder need a basket on this possession. Arasol gets Roy in the air. Puts in a three! Game on! Now the stop. No foul here. No Will foul. Hemel respond? Friend, the double team at Taylor Johnson. Stole, oh, nearly stolen. A foul called on Afiz Abdul. Thunder fans on their feet. What a tough ball. Oh, that was tough. I don't know if we can see a replay of that one. But assistant coach Chris Wright of Thunder not happy with the call. Zaya Taylor just talking to Ian Lester and the fans letting them hear it as we see it here Ooh, bit hard to tell I, really yeah I couldn't really sitting on the fence on that one <laughs> the King Silla makes the first huge free throws for yep. the man who lost this trophy in 2021 sorry despite what he does at the free throw line it's still a two possession game that's the main key Misses the second. Big possession this for the Thunder. Meyer oh. misses the layup. He thought he was fouled. Yeah, it looked like he contacted on there, and that's why the layup looked a bit off. Beautiful oh, wow. pass from Newman. Ball game. Clutch basket for Taylor Johnson. Who else? Outstanding transition basketball there, Newman. And a foul called on Johnson. It's... His second foul. As we see Newman thread the needle to Taylor Johnson. What they a went early in the clock there. What a pass though from, uh, from Sam Newman. Second in the league behind David Moyer in assists. As he ma as Arasol makes the first. They they really got a foul now, but they don't want Arasol to be the guy to foul. Obviously been on four. Someone else needs to pick that one up. Misses the second, Ward has the offensive board. Jackman a three, Jackman short, Johnson has it. Hemel so close. Unsportsmanlike. An unsportsmanlike foul has been called. It's on Jackman. Hemel rises to their feet. What a game. What a game we've had today. <laughs> I mean, since there's a fantastic advert for the National League. Two teams giving in their all. 
has said to competitive teams, the top two in NBL Division One, putting on a show oh. for Basketball England, for kicking and for British basketball. Misses the fast. Storm fans really making themselves heard here, just really enjoying every second of this this game. But Niall, you know, no need to panic. You know, you've missed the first, just make the second, compose yourself. But well, you still want to get the ball as well, so. Johnson yes. misses both, but as you say, Hemel will get the ball back. <laughs> he, he's had a 36-point game, Ian. I but guarantee, <laughs> end of game, the interview him, he will re remember those two free throws, even though the game is out of, out of reach. Absolutely. But, you know, stranger things have happened. We've seen some comebacks over the years, John. We have. In Surrey. So we've seen comebacks, not but just here for the Surrey Scorchers, but all across the BBL. Of course, last night, London Lions got a comeback over the Manchester Giants. We've seen teams in the NBL come back from bigger deficits as well. Ian, you've been part of that yourself as a player. Anything can happen in the last 20 seconds. Absolutely. And for Thunder now, it's just about... Can, can we get a deflection? Can we get a steal? Can we get some way to steal a possession, get a quick score? And then we put them to the line where anything can happen. Absolutely. Both teams are in the penalty. Storm have missed their, um, their two there with Taylor Johnson. Thunder, not the best three from shooting team, but can get it done from the foul line. It's just quick possessions now. Yeah. The one thing I want to see when the teams come back, I'd love to see, you've obviously got both the steal first, then foul, but offense, defense, maybe sit out of soul for out for one possession. Because if you have the foul, you don't want it to be him. Right. Because he's been quiet recently, but he can still pop up and make a great shot. Yeah, he's one of their shot makers for sure. They need so, him on the floor. But he has actually... Is he coming onto the floor? I think he is. Thunder need a quick steal here. Because he's guarding Kay Johnson, who the ball may well go to. See if they can get a steal on the inbounds. A one-time defensive player of the year, Andre Arasol. Yeah, they're trying not to foul the shooter, but they're going to run out of time they're gonna here. Have to they're going to have to foul, though, as Abdul fouls Taylor Johnson. Taylor Johnson, a 85% foul shooter for the season, will go to the line. Three fouls on the number three of Thunder, Rafiz Abdul. I'm not sure about the tactics there, not when you need two scores, but... Yeah, I think they may, maybe wanted to get it into the hands of someone other than Taylor Johnson, but unfortunately, they ended up eating a lot of clock. And of course, and really they can't take time out and advance the ball because they've used all their time. Absolutely. Exactly, and, and they used eight seconds of that game clock as well before they foul. 9.2 seconds remaining. And Hemel have an eight-point lead. And you've got to believe that those free throws have done it for the Storm. And a foul called on Oyafusi. That's a silly foul. That gives Thunder at least two more points on the board with 6.6 .6 remaining. Just no need for this play, you know. You don't need to body up that far from the basket. Absolutely, Put your yeah. hands up, eight-point game. Just defend the play. Exactly, That's shot it. clock was turned off, so it was a silly foul from Oyafusi. The thing is, even though you're so far down, you still try and miss the second one and get an offensive forward. Bear yeah. in mind how good a rebounding team they are. Moya yep. bringing Arasol back. He was on the foul line at the other end. And it's got to hit the rim, that though. will do. Got to hit, yeah, the ball has to hit the rim. It's so in, That was high off the back. That, was it yeah, that should not... Play shouldn't continue there. That was... That didn't even hit the rim. Referee's just conferring. Yeah. That should be a Hemel ball. And the problem is, this, was this a couple of seconds came off the clock? I'm not sure. Yeah, that was high, wasn't it? That was too high. So, under the ruling, Hemel should get the ball at mid-court. It's, it's going to be Hemel ball, and I, I believe they're going to put a couple of seconds back on the clock. I think it was yeah. 5.6 on the clock. They may let it tick for a second before they, before they hit the timer. Hemel Storm call the timeout with... 4.9 seconds remaining, yeah. leading by seven points. And there we see the adjustment, 6.6 .6 seconds. So there you go, so three seconds have been, well, three tenths have been shaved off. Yeah. But, you know, David Moyer looked and, you know, the intention was there, wasn't it, to get an extra possession, but not off the backboard. No, you've got, to, you've got to catch a piece of the rim. What he's trying to do there is not have it loft high 
where the defensive team can get good position and rebound. As a former player, it's amazing though sometimes how hard it is to actually miss the free throw on purpose. You know what? It's, it's a skill. We've seen it in the yeah. NBA a couple of times recently with Luka Doncic, where hitting the, hitting the rim with some velocity where you can then retrieve the ball and get out for three is really, really difficult to do. Oh, man, I saw Luka when he was, obviously before he went to Dallas, back with the Real Madrid, he could do that sort of play. I mean, what an absolute player he is. Absolutely, yeah. I've missed a fair few free throws in my time. Maybe I could do that. No? <laughs> Sub you in for that. <laughs> oh, my mic was muted there. Sorry, John. <laughs> Either but... way, 6.6 seconds remaining. And he's done the right thing. He's brought it into the front court. Because even if Wergen get the ball back immediately, they've got to go all the way down the floor. All the way, yeah. And that will eat at least a second of the game clock should Thunder get a quick steal. That said, I think Drew Spinks' hair has got really grey during the <laughs> game. I'm sure he had more colour at the beginning. And what a job Drew Spinks has done as, as we won this clock down. A fantastic team, undefeated for the year out, and the way he's managed this game from, from start to finish as well. Just a great coach. I remember interviewing Drew many, many years ago when he was a youngster of the Lions and, just, and even the Royals. I always felt he had that coach in him. Well, Worthing have decided to let the clock run. It's a delightful double for the Heaven Storm. 2023 Kick King Trophy winners. The unbeaten run keeps on going. Yeah, it'd be wonderful to see a special season, but of course, as you said earlier, these two teams still got to meet again in the league. And you know, even if the title's wrapped up, where are they going to be up for that game? And now you see the smiles and the celebrations as they bring the trophy out. Crowds into it, everyone's enjoying their day. Hemel Storm led by 38 points. Seven rebounds, four assists from Taylor Johnson. Redemption day for Taylor Johnson. Banishing the memory of the fouling out he got on the south coast on December 10th. Aaron Wright, 21 and 12. Another double-double for him. Hakeem Silla, two rebounds short of a double-double himself, 15 and 8. And for the Worthing Thunder, Orland Jackman leading the way with 23 points, five boards. Andre Arasol, the inaugural MVP, of this very trophy, 20 points on 8 for 12 shooting. Congratulations, though, to Emil Storm. What an advert, Ian, for the uh, for Basketball England and Kick King Trophy. Absolutely. This is this is Division One English basketball. This is the highest level outside of the BBL that we have. And they've got an absolute show today. For Hemel, five guys in double figures. And then their, their two leading scorers able to take them home in the fourth. And a double for the Hemel Storm. And, you know, They've deserved this today. It was hard fought, it was gritty, it was physical, but Hemel edged it today. Well, that's the thing, see, they're the winners today, but they're going to go away knowing that Worthing have pushed them all the way, Ooh. never gave up. Even when they were down double digits, they found their way, I think, was it two or three times they were down double yep. digits? Each time they fought, they fought their way back into the game. You know, just it was just too little to, at the end. But like I said, I love the way they pushed them all the game, and you can see why these are the two best teams in the league based on the performance they've put on today for them. Obviously the fans here at Surrey Sports Bar, but also those watching online. But just one thing about why I wait for the thing. Taylor Johnson, he had 32 when he played for Tim Valley Cavaliers here against Scorchers. He was beaten by a former Worthing Thunder player, yeah. was he not? Obviously Cam Hildred. What's he doing now, of course? <laughs> of course, Cam, fantastic career now, obviously at Wake Forest. You know, one, one of those ones to watch, but it was a worthy fun that broke his heart that day. Today he's come back, he's put 38 on the board, and he's going leaving here a winner. As the presentations now begin, starting with the referees and the table officials for today, scorer Alwyn Jaram, assistant scorer Kieran Schotter, Grace Jacker on the timer, and Basia Dudek on the shot clock, and of course the referees who officiated this match fantastically well ian lester ian green and john Letizia, two veteran or three veterans of basketball england's officiating crew and it's probably one of the hardest jobs in basketball 
being a referee, especially in a game like this, but they did so well today. Rachel Kent and Grace Ikono turn the statisticians. A fantastic job by them all today, putting together accurate statistics for not just us, but for the fans that might want to watch the game at home with the live stats in the background. And Worthing Thunder now will collect their runners-up medals, Ishmael Fontaine who did not play today, collecting Naz Abu Ramadan, his second straight runners-up medal for this trophy, brought a runner-up with Team Newcastle last season at Ponds Forge in Sheffield. Ronald Lane, David Moyer, also a part of that Newcastle team that lost to the Derby Trailblazers last year. And Andre Arasol collecting a second medal, unfortunately a first runners-up medal for him. And I've unfortunately been in this position, coming second in a couple of big competitions, and there's, there's really no worse feeling than when you're out there, you've competed, you've worked so hard, you're in the game, you've got a shot to win, and then you've got to go out there and you've got to take your second place and watch the other team celebrate. Really, really tough. But this will, this will, will stick with the Thunder, and as you mentioned earlier, now when they meet in the league, this is going to come around again. They're, they're going to have a great game, I'm sure. And there's, there's all to play for still in the league, even though Hemel are out there and, and undefeated in all competition. Yeah, it, it's all handshakes now, but they're going to have to use that. They need to use that as momentum for when they meet again. Because, you know, they don't want to let Hemel have an unbeaten season. Not many teams do it, of course. We've talked recently in the WBBL at the London Lions. Reading, huge streak they went on. Reading you Rockets. You about Reading yeah. Rockets earlier this century. It's, it's hard to do. It doesn't happen that often. Extremely hard. But obviously, Hemel will use it as a... Not momentum. They're using it as the, the thing to drive them on. But like so we said earlier, so they want to build that dynasty, John. It's not just this season, it's next season, it's the year after. It'd be and interesting to keep how much this team they can keep it together. And now the Hemel Storm will collect their winners' medals. A fantastic showing today from the Storm. They were made to work hard for it. Seth Swab had a fantastic first quarter. As Charles Aqua Davis and Taylor Johnson, who had 38 points today, you have to believe a surefire candidate for MVP. Alongside the man who many believe will be the league MVP in Aaron Rye. But it just shows you on how good this team are that Aaron Rye can have a slightly below par game, or below average, we'll say, because he still played great in other areas. And Taylor Johnson able to step up and take him to the win. And there is one more person to come, and that is the most decorated player, arguably, in NBL Division One. And finally, he can complete his set. Teo Oyafusi will be handed the trophy by the presentation party of Tim Brown, the chairman of Division One, Matt Neville, the Basketball England chairman, and the Kick King representative, Dips Patel. But first... It looks like the MVP will be awarded Who are you thinking, guys? Who's got it? Well, for me, there's only one guy. I mean, <laughs> there was a lot of good, lot of good performances in stretches, but Taylor Johnson just throughout the game just uh, just kept his foot on the gas and, and never looked back. Is, is surely only only one person. Absolutely, he delivered the entire game. And it looks like Ian and Niles present or prediction has come true for the second straight final. Taylor Johnson with the ultimate personal accolade, kicking trophy final, MVP. Congratulations to Taylor Johnson. And now, Teo Oyafusi will come up. Hemel Storm at 
the double and who can go against them to collect another two trophies when April the 22nd is out. Hebel Storm are kicking trophy winners. Of course, they've had to wait since October to play this yeah. one, haven't they? It's been a long time coming. October 8th, October 9th was when the Hemel Storm and the Worthing Thunder reached the final. Hemel defeated the Reading Rockets 100 to 69. Worthing defeating Derby 96 to 87. Congratulations, though, to the Hemel Storm hey. as confetti now eventually goes across the court. Yeah, someone's got to clean that up for the next game. <laughs> I'm sure that will be quick. And some of the players were telling me pre-game that this is the, the most team-like team they've been on. They all really, really get on well with each other. Bunch of good guys. And it is great to see them enjoying this, this moment yeah. with each I other. Mean, we've talked about Taylor Johnson. We've talked about Aaron Wright quite a lot. And obviously Hakeem Silla. But other players keep stepping up and proving big, don't they? Absolutely. They're, they are a complete team and, and, and a force to be reckoned with this season and onwards. And in just a moment, we will get post-game thoughts. Josh Bett is standing by. I'm going to take a, a wild swing in the park that he's going to be gunning for Taylor Johnson as Hemel Storm continue to celebrate. And who's to bet against them, Ian, to collect another two trophies by the season's end? Of course, the playoff final is scheduled for the end of April. And bets are that Hemel will be in that game but obviously you know basketball can be a funny game but Hemel unbeaten right now and two trophies in the bag already yeah Niall mentioned how hard it is to have a perfect season and it is extremely tough you've got to go you've got to fade injuries you've got to find consistency work out your rotations figure out who your scorers are all that stuff that comes together and so far they're doing it you know and let's not forget Niall that last week Hemel got two wins without Taylor Johnson playing, especially against Derby Trailblazers, who are third in the league right now. Yes, yeah, it's mentioned with Ian, is when yeah. players haven't been on their game or unavailable, the good thing about this roster is other players keep stepping up mm. and filling the gap. It's great to see. It just shows how strong. And this is a settled team. I don't think this team has changed anybody this season, really, no. has it? It hasn't. No. Everybody who's been able to play has played. Yeah. No one's left. The only player that hasn't played much this season has been, has been Bernard Herhetro who's out for the season yeah. but apart from that yeah no it's pretty much uh, all there and that shows you how settled this roster is yeah. it, it, you need to make any changes so um, we're still awaiting as uh, Hemel's fans and the Hemel players just gathering for their traditional <laughs> cup final victory picture much like they did in Manchester back in January. What a final we have witnessed here today. Hemel Storm, 99, 92 victors. Got to it get is, your picture of the fans. It is you? storm season, no doubt about it. Hemel now will concentrate on the league now. Two more wins needed to clinch a first ever league title. And Hemel's fans are really impressive. It's a very family-run club, and they really get behind their club, and they enjoy every single moment. Great away support, and they've been fantastic today as well. Well, I always used to love one of the first places I ever went to to watch basketball was Hemel back in the days when of Hemel Royals they became the Lions, and it was always a great venue despite the fact in those days the Royals were a bad team who could never <laughs> win. But I used to love going there because the atmosphere was fantastic. And it's great to see that they've got a successful team in Hemel now. As you see, the celebrations continuing here at Surrey Sports Park. Hemel Storm, 99-92 winners over the Worthing Thunder. Takes two teams to tango, though, doesn't it, uh, uh, Ian? And Worthing Thunder more than played their part today. Absolutely, and they, they gave Hemel a real scare in terms of pushing them right to the edge. I mean, we, still, we talked about it in the first half when Hemel went out on a run. Uh, Thunder answered, it was a two-point game in the half. And then the same story in the second half, really. Down the stretch, it just came to a little bit too much from Hemel. And Josh is now courtside with 
the Kick King Trophy MVP, Taylor Johnson. What a great game was, Taylor. First of all, congratulations. Unbelievable performance. But again, basketball, collective effort, of course. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yes, you know. Um, yeah, it's uh, like you said, it's a collective effort. Um, I mean, if you watch the game, most of the most of my points early on were not like me creating. You know, I was catching a pass from a teammate who was making the play. So yeah, collective effort. Yeah. Now, Worthy, of course, he kept hanging back at you. you know, very tough team, very emotional team. But transition, you guys were very effective on the fast break. Yeah. So that was one of the things we saw was that they they pick up full court. They try to they try to mix things up, get some steals. And so we, you know, I guess early on we scored a little bit off of that, but then. At some point in the second quarter, they, they started to make their little push and got a few turnovers off of us, and uh, so it went back and forth a little bit. Yeah, they're a good team. Now your coaching staff, Drew Spinks is one hell of a player when he used to play for the Milton Keynes Lions or the Hamill Lions, as they were called back in the day, which is now the London Lions. How big of an inspiration has he been to your crew? Oh, huge inspiration. Also, he, yeah, he brings it all the time. He's always, uh, he's always coming prepared. He brings a lot of intensity, um, and, yeah, he's always looking through the details to, to do everything he can to get us prepared. So now I yeah. tweeted today, basketball in the United Kingdom is not very popular, but hold on a second. Your fans today were phenomenal. What can you say about your Hemel fans? Man, they bring it every game. That's what they do. Yeah, I can say that about them. Every game, home or away, um, they bring the noise. Now yeah. I'm going to leave one last thing. 30 years from now, Hemel's going to need to find new players to surround around you when you're playing for the Storm in the future trophies, right? You're not retiring anytime soon, right? Uh, I, not, hopefully not, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to play, like, as long as I can. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. MVP yeah. of the game, Taylor Johnson. Taylor, congratulations. Yep. Thank you, sir. All the best. Back to you, John. Well, I'm, I'm not going to bet against Taylor Johnson playing in, in 30 years' time. I mean, my goodness me, he has the longevity to do it. But it might be a bit tough. But who's to bet against it, I guess? <laughs> I mean, he's done everything <laughs> else so far in British basketball, so... If he's still playing in 30 years' time, then that's, that's, a, that's a dynasty. <laughs> that's a real that, dynasty. That will be a dynasty. <laughs> Absolutely no doubt about it. As we leave you with the game highlights here, the Hemel Storm have completed a delightful double. They have defeated the Worthing Thunder in the Kick King Trophy Final 99-92. to Taylor Johnson with back-to-back -back MVPs this season already. Who's to bet against the Hemel Storm collecting another trophy in the next month or so? For me, John Hobbs, my thanks to Niall Gray, to Ian Berry, and so long, everybody. Have a pleasant afternoon.